see we live yeah we're live what's going on guys sure. motley investor here with the 11th episode of knights of the crypto table with uh look into crypto and bally at brand dollar cost uh crypto will be joining us later uh, after his long excursion with his course that he does with cultivate crypto uh highly successful if you guys want to get some basic knowledge on cryptocurrencies um, from A to Z, amazing course. I think they had almost a thousand um, people take that course just recently. So it's very successful. Definitely look into it. But he'll be joining us after a much long uh, awaited hiatus uh, in the next like 30 minutes, give or take. In the meantime, we got a lot to talk about between Ethereum, uh, Richard forking Ethereum, essentially the Pulse chain, or at least that's been what's put out to us now. We have. We're going to be talking about price, uh, <laughs> what we think uh, Hex can do this year, and um, it's pretty pretty mind-boggling, in my opinion. We'll talk about uh, what some of the other topics we were going to discuss. Maybe the interview with Nerd Girl and Rock today. I know Bally at Brand and I saw that. Um, and what was a few other things that we were going to talk about, Brand? Oh, we got Pulse Chain. We got PayPal enables uh, crypto. Um, um, a possible Economist uh, magazine. You know, uh, hex advertisement maybe this Friday. Yeah, Visa, Visa um, picking up Ethereum. Do you do you see that uh, Wasabi? Do you see uh, look into that? <clears throat> Was it the, oh the the Visa thing? Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, I honestly I don't think too much of it. It's right because uh, USDC right now it's I mean most of the volume is likely on Ethereum, uh, <clears throat> but as more and more businesses enter the space. I won't be surprised to see uh, USDC getting um, basically split up potentially between different chains. Ethereum will likely be the main one for uh, for a while, uh, but you'll over time you'll see uh, you'll see settlements happen on other chains as well. Because for if if you have a lot of USDC settlements, uh, layer one you can't. It's too expensive to do it on L1. But if some sort of tech stack exists for that on L2 then you can get really cheap settlements. Uh, but for now, that, that infrastructure is currently being developed. So it's going to take some time to get to that point. So I think for now, from a, I'm just thinking from a fees perspective, it would make sense that uh, you would deploy perhaps on Ethereum since it's the main chain right now, but also potentially use other networks for just to uh, reduce fees and such un <laughs> until, L2 gets, uh, until L2 gets going. Right. Speaking of reducing fees, uh, Richard is forking Ethereum, which we all know, but now we have a name to put with it, and it's kind of what a lot of us guessed, uh, PulseChain.com. So that's uh, that's kind of interesting. It'll be a nice inside joke. I know a lot of the community members were kind of like talking about, <laughs> what's up, Johnny? We're talking about uh, it's nice to have that inside joke, and it's going to be fun watching Richard explain PulseChain with a straight face <laughs> in his next interview. <laughs> But uh, yeah, let's so uh, let's go ahead and kind of start talking about what we think might we might see with this fork. I know, so I kind of want to preface this too because this has kind of been a little bit of a pet peeve of mine as we've gone on the past couple of days. We really don't have any information from Richard other than a damn name. <laughs> so right now we have Pulse Chain, and that's about it. Um, we know we're forking because of fees. I know Ethereum's having the Berlin fork coming up here in April. That's going to increase our S load by 2.7x, which for any token that actually does any sort of computation is going to um, affect essentially our fees, raising them again. So they're essentially forcing our hand, forcing Richard's hand, and we're going to fork Ethereum. Uh, the biggest thing with the speculation that I just want to get into is we'll have some fun with it. We'll come up with some pump minerals, but at the same time, no one really knows how this fork is going to be done. A lot of us have ideas of how we'd like to think it's going to be done. And I see people already kind of taking sides and getting combative with it, but it's really not necessary because unless you're part of the core dev team or Richard, we don't really know which direction this fork is going to be, take place or how it's even going to take place. So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of speculate through what our little game theories are, our pump of minerals, and then uh, we'll just have some fun with it. So Bran, you can uh, kick it off with uh, how you might think this Ethereum fork on Pulse Chain is going to go. So, uh, I guess I'll kind of start with even just a, a recent video that I've seen from you know Johnny Chaos was that the the fork itself is a hard fork of Ethereum, and you know sometimes you can have just like 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 with Hex we had 
uh, the Bitcoin users had like a snapshot date for who could claim. And, you know, Johnny was kind of mentioning in the video that unless the parameters specifically had, you know, hexagons or hex stakers or people that owned hex as a, uh, you know, main variable, then it might just be Ethereum from just like a bird's eye view kind of, you know, non, uh, you know, just kind of like a speculative thing, like a safe side bet. So, um, I mean, I think what Richard's talked about is similar to like the Ethereum 2.0, right? It's going to be like a proof of stake, kind of kind of have like a EIP 1559 built into it where it kind of has like the coin burning for like part of the uh, the fee system. And uh, I think it's just going to overall, mainly I think what we can kind of expect possibly as hexagons to speculate is like the, since it's going to be on its own network, the pull chain network that the transactions to like buy it are going to be cheaper to send it are going to be cheaper uh, to stake and then to unstake are going to be cheaper. But as far as everything else goes, Richard's mentioned, like there's a couple of exciting things, but uh, you know, I can't even begin to speculate what that would be uh, right off bat. Well, you have to, that's the name of the game right now. What about you looking <laughs> to crypto? What do you, um, <clears throat> what do you think are some of the pathways that we can take in this port? Yeah. So uh, for one, uh, what I see the chain being used primarily for is for, uh, of course, like hex staking. So that way, uh, you can you can stake your coins and mint them at a later time for for low cost. So regardless of of whatever burden is on L1 on Ethereum, uh, that pretty much solves a lot of the the fee issues because you can effectively have a chain that's uh, dedicated to like a specific purpose. So um, it's almost like I I kind of think of it even even though it's it's not technically speaking like a shard of ethereum it kind of is like because it it's uh the way i kind of see it right now is it seems like it's a good side chain where you can use it for a dedicated purpose for for hex staking um you'll always have low fees to to mint uh mint your coins stake your coins uh burn your coins if you're if you're setting up a new stake uh and then one way you can let's say bring value back and forth and just have like a two-way bridge uh between let's say ethereum and pulse chain is um, you can basically have like a contract between them where <clears throat> if you want to take value from Ethereum onto Pulse Chain, uh, you can basically burn your coins effectively, let's say on on uh, on the ETH chain and then mint them on Pulse Chain so that everything is held one to one um, and then just have it two ways so that the value can flow in either direction. There's probably other ways to do it. That's just um, that's just one way I'm thinking about. Uh, I know for a lot of the cross chain stuff, there's other networks that are, um, that kind of do it that way where you you basically lock your coins in a smart contract and then you can mint them on the other chain so that you can uh, bring value across easily. So uh, I think a lot of the tech stack for some of that stuff, it's there's probably some good stuff out there. Um, and I think it'll be pr uh, pretty good as far as the, the overall usability because the fees go down. And then uh, as far as buying and like if you're buying Hex, uh, that's the part I don't have a like an opinion for right now because the the majority of the liquidity um, in this space the reality is that Ethereum has um, it has so much liquidity on chain so it's possible that you know for buying hex you could still have people that let's say buy <clears throat> large amounts of hex on the ETH chain and then when they want to stake it they can basically roll that over onto like the Pulse chain or something like that so a lot of it just depends on like how easy it is to. Uh, bridge the value across um, across the chains because right now we we mostly see uh, <clears throat> value held on Ethereum, but uh, I think we are ultimately going to end up in this uh, kind of cross chain ecosystem, and then value is just going to flow easily between like one chain to another. Right. I was I was kind of thinking something along the same lines that you were, and it's it's one thing I've seen in the community where we seem to think that this fork is going to be nothing but just essentially a hard copy of ethereum and hex almost like a duplicate hex on the pulse chain and i see a lot of people like getting in camps already like what what hex is going to have value which isn't going to have value are they both going to have value should i dump my uh hex on on layer one on original eth and keep the one in pulse and the problem i had with this and i was just i wanted to preface this with we're just doing speculation because no one really has enough information to really base anything off of right now i foresee it personally as this fork being more of us forking ETH, reducing fees, coming up with a new token, Pulse, and then having like, uh, look into crypto, saying more of a bridge that reaches back out to the Ethereum chain. And 
validates that information on layer one and looking at the looking at the hex contract verifying your shares uh verifying your stakes and you're able to maybe use a pulse token to uh commence those fees and we reduce we reduce the the main choke point we have right now which is the fees so mm -hmm. i see it more as maybe just more of a focus of forking ethereum adding some new cool features a new token and it's going to enable us to essentially bridge from layer one to layer two, or it might even just be a side chain and reach back to the original contract, verify the information with like maybe how Richard was talking about validators. I believe he mentioned about 80 something validators. Probably you'd have to run your own node. And that would be how we actually bridge that gap, able to validate what's on the old hex contract. And then we have a new chain that's able to do all the computation and lower fees, enabling us not have to worry about that in the future. So that's kind of how I foresee it going. Other people foresee it just being a direct copy. We now have two hexes, then Pulse Chain comes into play. So there's a bunch of different ways you can view it. And that's the only problem I had was the community kind of already seeing to take sides and get up in arms. And at the end of the day, none of us know which route it's gonna go. Now the cool aspect of it, which I think we can almost be certain of that's coming down the road, is essentially pump of metals that Hex is, or that Richard's gonna put into this. Like, I think we're going to have essentially another big payday event. I think there will be an airdrop of whatever coin is going to be on Pulse on the Pulse chain. I think we will have an airdrop. I think that's yet to be determined how that's uh, distributed. I honestly think it's just going to be, it's going to be dropped to Hex, any Hex holders. And I know a lot of people are like, well, it should only go to the stakers. I've had, I've seen conversations in the voice chat about some of the known whales overwatch he's a known whale in the community he talked about he sees that as kind of being unfair because he owns a large position in hex and due to a couple certain contract contractually and entities that purchase the hex they can't stake so it's not really fair to him to not get the airdrop if it's just to stake hex i think honestly if you just do an airdrop to all hex liquid and staked it's going to create a massive amount of buy pressure um, that could put us to prices that we haven't even wrapped our minds around yet this early on. Like, I think we kind of pull back our numbers as of late, just being a little bit more conservative, saying, oh, 10 cents, 15 cents, maybe we hit 20 cents by the end of the year. I know looking to crypto and I have been talking and like, we really can't see that 25 cent to 50 cent mark by the end of this year easily uh, <laughs> with some of the conversations we had. And then that was without this like, potential big payday event that might take place. And I know look at the crypto I was talking about put it, pushing us to a dollar at that point. I was just like, Oh my God. Like I was including that in the calculations to 50 cents, but like, he's like, no, we can get to 50 cents without that. So pretty, pretty crazy. What's coming down the pipeline. It's fun to speculate on. Don't, don't choose sides. Honestly, none of you uh, are part of the core team or Richard. So it's, you can't really make those speculations and start making base camps now because we don't know, right? Just have fun with mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, anything else uh, on that? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think you pretty much said it. Uh, you pretty much hit it hard on <clears throat> on the the Polish chain. So there's right now there's just the there's the information that we know, which is really just the name. And <clears throat> as far as the the controversy, how things get done. Uh, we can't we can't say with certainty like what's going to be the the solution for that so anybody that's getting like kind of over like if you're getting stressed about it like you're there's there's not really any information to go off of so um there's not there's not really any point to like stress about it uh but the conversation's still good because uh there's there's ways i guess in the cryptocurrency market now that value flows between different networks and um, to me, it just comes down to whether uh, do you use something that currently exists that works pretty well, or is there something in mind that Richard has that could make it even better? So uh, right now, we just we only have the information as to what exists in the space now. Uh, what I'm thinking about in terms of the the hex token itself, um, I'm not really sure. I, I'm kind of more on the side that uh, if you end up, let's say, trying to create uh, like an identical version of like hex, let's say you, you airdrop it to like holders or something like that. You can, you can then have confusion as to what the real hex is. Like, is it the one on the ETH chain? Is it the one on 
um, the pulse chain. I'm, I have no idea if that's how it is. I'm just spe- uh, this is pure speculation. Um, but I, I've seen other projects where to avoid running into the running into like the psychological issues is you can still key packs on the ETH chain. And then if you want to move the value over, there's w- there's there's ways you can do that without introducing a new token um, by effectively locking you know, coins in a, in a smart contract and then minting them on the other chain. And then that way, like, so, so effectively you have hex as it is today on the ETH chain, and then you can have hex dot pulse. You can think of it on the pulse chain. And then if you want to go back to the ETH chain, you put your hex dot pulse into like the contract, and then you could pull uh, now your hex back onto the ETH main chain so that you're, you're still pegged. You're always pegged one-to-one. So um, there's, there's multiple ways to do it. Uh, and then we'll just have to see, I guess, what the, um, what the dev team is thinking as far as, uh, as far as like getting that value flow across the two chains. Right. And I know uh, in the voice chat and the main hex uh, telegram channel, I know Silver was bringing up this point. Uh, he seemed like he seemed to think that Richard was talking about rebranding Hex. I think he just kind of mixed up his information earlier on. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't. It, I don't think Hex is ever going to be rebranded. What Richard was meaning is this new chain is going to have a new mm-hmm. name. It's probably going to have a new token that goes with it. And that's why I think they are going to be separate entities that are going to be bridged some some form or another. In my in my opinion, so I, the Hex brand is not going to get rebranded. The only reason this chain is not doesn't have hex in the name not related as in that regards is mm-hmm. like he like he did said there is a lot of negative con connotation obviously we've had a lot of pushback so this is going to be its own separate entity it's going to be help vertically integrate all the issues that we're having with hex right now being on the mm-hmm. ethereum chain so it's going to help vertically integrate us but at the same time it's going to it's going to open up the door not only for hex but there's probably going to be other projects down the road that are going to be looking at could potentially look at pulse chain as an option to start building their projects on we really yeah. can start having an ethereum ecosystem of our own and i know mm-hmm. there's probably a lot of individuals in here that would like it to stay just strictly hex but we you might be looking in the future where you have other other projects coming to build on um onto our platform that we build on on pulse chain on our chain so yeah. it's something maybe start preparing yourself for now maybe mm-hmm. uh maybe there'll be some stuff put into place where we're a little bit we're a little bit stricter on what gets built on our chain i don't know if we have that option being uh decentralized so i don't know if you can really implement who builds on your chain maybe you can maybe you can't a lot of these questions will be good to have like steph firebun dev kyle all this which i think those conversations are coming on what's possible what's not possible but uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. I think we really are in the works of building essentially a new Ethereum. Hopefully, a more uh, more prosperous, uh, lower fees, and some cool features that Richard's not at liberty to disclose yet. So we'll yeah. see we'll see what the future entails. But it's gonna be fun. Right. Have fun speculating on it, but don't get into camps and start bashing each other's heads and like you know where where we're going with it because no one does. No one does. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, there's one. There's actually a comment that mentions. Uh, so Richard Hart mentioned Pulse uh, would be a layer one solution. Yes. And yeah, that's that's per- that's perfectly fine because there's uh, plenty of space to do uh, the staking and the minting for for Hex uh, on Pulse. Um, and plus, like in terms of let's say having now you now you have Hex and, and Pulse. The the way I think about it is I view Hex as a store of value. Um, you lock up your coins over a very long period of time, and then Pulse has its own unique attributes too, where you're effectively potentially using it to secure uh, Pulse chain. So um, at the end of the day, it, it, you you end up having more synergy. So I don't I don't really um, I don't really think negatively in terms of like you know, one trying to siphon value from the other. I, I think personally it's it's a net positive because now um, if you have, let's say, people with like, you know, 100 or $200 that are trying to stake their coins, they now have a means to always do that. They can use that as a store value. And then you have uh, the network validators that are, that are securing the chain and just having enough of them so that it's uh, decentralized enough. I mean, <clears throat> there's already other coins in the space that, are basically in a way kind of like side chains to Ethereum. There's stuff like Polkadot. Uh, I think Polkadot's like one of the the main ones right now. And um, the network, it's it's fine. Like they have they have the their stakers on the network that are securing the chain. And so far, everything seems to be working fine. And there's a lot of scalability benefits to it. So 
um, that's just kind of the, the direction the space is going in. So we are ultimately going to go into a cross-chain environment. We're going to have cross-chain, we're going to have layer two, and depending on on the actual application, like or whatever um, whatever the purpose is, different solutions are going to use different things. Some things are, some things are going to use layer one, uh, some things are going to get use layer two. Uh, but if you get in the mindset of like uh, just kind of a rigid approach, um, that's uh, it's kind of you're you're putting yourself at a disadvantage because ultimately all these solutions are going to exist in the future. Right. And I mean, layer two, I think we kind of talked about it as well. Like, I don't think layer two is necessarily the solution right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's just too, it's too complicated. It's not seamless. Yeah. Maybe in the future, it will be. It, it looks like it could be a potential solution, but I, I don't think we're there yet. It, it feels more like a band aid to me um, mm -hmm. than it does a solution. And I think, I think there's ways to still reduce these fees on layer one that can be implemented. I think we probably see that with Pulse Chain. Like, uh, uh, who was that, that said earlier? Identity, Identity Block said it earlier. Like, it, the new Pulse Chain will probably be a layer one solution. So, like, you can still do mm -hmm. it on layer one and reduce the fees without going totally. to layer two. Because crypto is already complicated enough, right? Like, I think uh, a lot of people in here probably saw Crypto Coffee's uh, instructional video. Um, it was the Matic network, so it was kind of more of a side chain, but like the amount of steps that you had to go to actually mm -hmm. bridge that gap, go to the wallet, send it out, wait hours mm -hmm. for to come in and out, still pay fees. It's just not where it needs to be yet. Yeah. But we're maybe yeah. in the future. <clears throat> well, that's yeah. why things like stake staker app can really be beneficial. Uh like they'll be able to benefit from this pulse chain because think about it. Uh I mean I personally had the pleasure of having like the, the Gnosis safe on a uh, Gnosis safe on Staker app, and it's got some cool features, right? But imagine if you could have the same thing, the same experience that you have, being able to onboard easily, uh, and then also have the fees be significantly lower because it's on the the new network that lowers the fees. So I think about things like that when it comes to like being able to onboard people more easily because you mentioned layer two kind of being like a temporary band aid and. I completely agree. When I saw, when I saw some of the layer two stuff coming out, the you know the Matic Polygon uh, stuff for Hex, I uh, personally just didn't want to mess with it because I had already been comfortable with the stakes and didn't mind paying a little extra fee for it to go uh, more immediately. But I think things like Pulse Chain could definitely uh, bring up the game and step up the experience for things like Stake Rep. Yoda brings up a good uh, good point. <laughs> Your tax burden for this airdrop air income on all these lot coins will be amazing. Seriously, the dev team needs to consider this potential problem. I mean, I don't think there's really too too many ways around it. I think uh, if you're outside of the U.S., you're probably in a much better situation than most of us. If you're in the U.S., it's just something you're going to have to work out with your CPA and um, mm. figure that out for yourself. There's probably ways to avoid, like if you, for whatever reason, don't want the airdrop, I'm sure there's ways around it, but uh, for the most part, that's something, especially for the United States uh, individuals, that we're probably just going to have to deal with on our own terms, whether that be our CPA or whoever we mm -hmm. go to for our consultation. Yeah, and, I, and mm -hmm. go ahead. Oh, uh, sorry. I was, yeah, I was just going to say, in terms of uh, airdrops, um, I mean, the, the way I look at look at you know airdrops is because uh, theoretically anybody could just airdrop coins into your wallet and there yep. could be some value supposedly associated with that but um it's too like if you look at you know taxes and stuff on on airdrops um to me it only matters if you let's say know you first off have access to the coins because theoretically like you could have tons of airdrops that you're not even aware of so uh in the case for let's say you know pulse if if the coins are let's say locked you technically don't have like it's it's technically speaking you don't actually have access to that value so there's no like if the coins are actually locked there is no from my viewpoint there's no taxable event until in your wallet you have those coins and you're allowed to send and receive them but if the coins are locked um they don't like that value for you doesn't actually exist until you actually have the coin. So uh, personally, I, I don't even think the airdrop itself is going to be too much of a of an issue with with it in the U.S. because the the reality is like cri cryptocurrency itself, it's a very young market, and even um, a lot of the confusion regarding airdrops. There's going to be a lot of changes to that kind of stuff over so, a period of so time. So gray, 
it's the yeah. whole area with Texas is so great. And uh, the me- the biggest thing is just just protect yourself, guys. Like have mm-hmm. someone else take that liability. Have your CPA sign off on it. And worst case scenario, it just becomes. We kind of talked about this um, elsewhere earlier today, but it just becomes more of just like, oh, this was this just wasn't documented correctly or whatever. But have that CPA mm-hmm. take that take that brunt um, to a degree. But I mean, other yeah. people feel a certain way about taxes. To each their own. Um, just be just be intelligent. Don't don't do anything stupid that's gonna get you in jail. Even yeah, even McAfee, right. who's worth billions. And that's another thing, right? Like most of you guys are small fry now, even even with your hex gains that you have, but years down the road, like you guys mm. are all gonna become whales yourselves. So you're you become a lot more appealing to the IRS than right. <laughs> and the tax collector when you actually have a substantial amount of money yes. for them to come that's- after. So keep that in uh, mind. absolutely, yeah. The the and the the IRS when it comes to taxes, they can wait uh, a very long time until the person that they're interested in. There's a certain, there's just a certain dollar value target the person can represent in the future where it makes sense for them to attack them because there's a huge incentive for them to do so. So, um, yeah, definitely what Motley's suggesting, like definitely take all that stuff very seriously because at the end of the day, like there's a certain opportunity cost in your future if you end up um, getting caught in that kind of situation. And that's like, that is one of the worst things you can get uh, basically caught up in um, it, this, this, like truly like your bags and all that stuff are going to have tremendous value in the future. So um, just be, just be smart about how you're going about that because um, at the end of the day, like it, it all comes down to opportunity cost, And there, there's just, there just might be some things that you're not aware of that could, um, present itself in like seven to eight years. So just be very careful with that stuff. I agree. Totally. Well, you, much, yeah, go yeah. I mean, just real quick in in that uh, same uh, context is that like Motley says, I mean, it, and even Firebond mentioned a long time ago with funding gym is that it doesn't take many hundreds of acts for say a thousand dollars to become 500,000 or 300,000. And mm-hmm. yeah, you definitely want to be, just like with anything, right? If you're building a house and you build the foundation properly and then build the you know, first and second and third floor, you're going to be set for success. So if you can do the same thing with uh, cryptocurrency or Hex, which is an asset, then uh, you're going to be a lot better off uh, in, in the long run as opposed to like last minute things and, and struggling and, and not doing things properly. So yeah, you definitely got to plan for stuff like that ahead of time and just, just be smart about how you do things. And I mean, people always talk about evading taxes, especially in cryptocurrency and all this stuff. Like, honestly, like you guys are in such a position where if you hold on to your hex bags and your stake properly, like it's really going to be it's not going to be anything off of you to just pay your damn taxes. Like even even giving the government 10, 15, even 20 percent of whatever you, you earn. I don't think a lot of you realize how much money you potentially have right now. Like I, I foresee in the future that hex is going to do amazing things if you have strong hands and make it to fruition to most of your stakes you're going to have so much money like you're not going to give two shits about paying taxes like you really Mm -hmm. you really aren't there's a certain there's a certain point where you have enough money that it satiates you and what what else you what are you concerned about once you like richard said once you have the finest things in life whether you have the best throne you have the best mic you have the best car you have the best house would you would you really have to be concerned about as far as um any sort of financial burdens you have to pay the electric bill you have to pay you go out to eat every now and then you food like there's really not that much more you need money for at that point you've built up such a strong passive income other investments taxes taxes are no longer an issue along with everything else you have you have everything you you want the the essentially what we're all trying to do right now is escape the rat race you're out of the rat race once you're out of the rat race you're good your money continues to compound on itself continues to grow and you no longer you no longer need to stress out over what the common american or the common person does with bills punching that nine to five clock you get a you get a get out of that rat race due to what hex can potentially do for you and you can pay your taxes along the way and not even bat an eye so there's no reason not to otherwise you're just going to be looking over your shoulder for the rest of your life or fleeing different countries just trying to evade evade your taxes like it, to me it doesn't make much much sense mm-hmm. um but yeah i think that's enough harping on that i know let's see what was it someone had a question on polka dot uh oh i think it was blue bum you might know this uh look into crypto how many validators does polka have or how does it work 
I think uh, someone answered it down here. It might have been. Yeah, I think there was a there was an answer. So around a thousand validators for Polkadot. So um, yeah, so the way they have a staking mechanism as well, right? Is that who gets to validate it along with I'm assuming running some sort of node? Yeah, so the the way um, the way the so so in Polkadot you have different pools and you can contribute. Let's you can delegate. Let's say your funds to a certain pool. Uh, so there. So the moment you stake your coins on Polkadot, there's if you unstake in the future, there's like a 28 day waiting period before you have access to your funds funds again. So um, it's very similar to like a, a lot of other staking that exist, except there's a there's a lockup period if you unstake your coins where you, you can't access them until the lockup period ends. Uh, but really, the way uh, Polkadot works in a nutshell is you have your relay chain and then you have all these pair chains or you could just think of them as shards so uh to, to kind of bring the analogy to, let's say to ethereum is uh, ethereum itself can represent a single theoretically it could represent let's say a single pair chain on on polka dot so you could have these other networks and then effectively the relay chain um is uh like a like an ultimate form of like security essentially. So um, you just get a lot of customization because you can have different parachains do different functions. Um, it's kind of similar to what Ethereum is looking to do in the future, where uh, it's looking to do sharding to to scale the network. Um, the difference is like in in parachains for Polkadot, uh, each parachain can have a different type of execution environment. So on Ethereum, you have EVM, uh, meaning Ethereum Virtual Machine. Uh, on Polkadot, every single parachain can have uh, a different type of execution environment. But there's um, there's some really interesting things as far as like how the relay chain uh, ties into that, and that's what um, Polkadot it, its value is essentially within that uh, relay chain. And this is probably the last thing I'll harp on taxes and identity blocks as they can help uh, hexagons with any taxation uh, questions. I'm pretty sure he's from Puerto Rico, so he can uh, probably speak on that. And mm. a lot of people just don't realize there's a lot of tools. Um, there's a lot of way to claim losses. I believe Hexmax said it in here somewhere that there's there's ways to actually take take losses on your on your taxes, whether gas fees, if you get airdropped a certain chain, like there, there's certain different ways you can implement uh, advantages that your average person doesn't use when it comes to taxes. So get a good CPA. I know Overwatch again, the hex whale that's uh, pretty prolific in the new voice chat. He was talking about he has a, a CFO, his chief financial officer, that's a wizard with tax law and taxation. And he's talked about him coming on and doing either maybe setting up a live stream or just setting up a time for them to go over and open up the floor to the community about some tax questions and some tax advantages they can use in the future. So I think that would be really cool to see in the future. But there, there's a lot of there's a lot of tools and stuff that you can use to essentially lower what kind of taxes you pay. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll move on from that one. Uh, speaking of the voice chat, I guess we can talk about that. I don't know. Have you been in there at all looking to crypto? I know. I know. Brian has. Yeah, I've uh, I've popped in a, a few times. It it looks like it's super active. So um, every time I've seen it, there's like 40 people in there. Um, yeah. Seems pretty cool. It's a good way to uh, basically get. Um, it's 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 nice having that as an option as opposed to kind of just the traditional texting style that Telegram is. So. Uh, all in all, it seems like it's it's getting a lot of traction. So uh, I've went, I popped in there a couple times just to see, um, you know, some of the cool stuff everybody was talking about. It's good. It's a good way to get information to you. Like there's going to be potentially people in there speculating. There could be all sorts of co- uh, conversations that uh, just give you some more in- <clears throat> more information to uh, uh, to consider. Yeah, definitely. What about you, Brian? What do you think? I, I think it's awesome. I mean, like looking to crypto mentioned, I mean, you know, there, there's multiple ways of like communicating text obviously is one of them, but honestly it's the most slow. So when you got your phone for me, I mean, I'm just going like with two fingers or even on a computer with, uh, you know, your, your 10 fingers and with the audio chat, it's so much easier to kind of convey your point. And also the cool thing about it is like, if I'm listening to a YouTube video and I click the, uh, the lock button, it's going to stop the video because I don't got like the YouTube pro, but in the audio chat, the telegram, the t.me slash hex crypto uh, audio chat, you can, for me, I can lock the lock screen and it'll still go. And so also, yeah, I mean, everyone can kind of feel comfortable not being on a live stream 
uh, not being behind the camera, and they can ask the questions that they want. I mean, we've seen uh, Clay with Nomics. We've seen him uh, kind of lurking, and then from the conversation that Maddie Allen was having, he like had to jump in, and then Richard jumped in on that, which which Maddie was able to get the audio of. So I think it's a revolutionary way of communicating, and I personally never had the opportunity to try out Clubhouse because I'm on Android. So when I heard that the audio chat for Telegram was coming out, I was really excited. Yeah, so like Children of the Grave said, it's very addictive. I found myself pretty much in there all day today at work, not paying attention at all to work. Uh, <laughs> and I, I've seen a lot, right? Like Brand mentioned, I think it's very good for people that might not be comfortable with coming on stream yet or just have no interest in it. Voice chat is a very good way to get your point across without having to sit there and text it all out because hex can be as simple as you want to make it or as complex as you want to make it. And sometimes it's just easier to get your thoughts across via speech as opposed to texting it all out. So that's, so that's good. Um, I've noticed good and bad with the voice chat one, all you fuckers talk over each other, which I get, uh, it's a bunch of type, I, type a personalities in there. And you essentially have one audio channel with 40, 50, 60 individuals in there. And for the most part, everyone's pretty patient. Uh, they try to, they try to let someone get their thought across. The problem is when that thought is complete, you have five or 10 people that want to comment and then it gets kind of a clusterfuck. You got to unfuck sure. it and then go, move on from there. So I first, that's a little bit of an issue, but you can get in there when the groups are smaller sometimes. Uh, what I've noticed, it really is just great for newcomers to come in, listen, pick up a lot of good knowledge for the community. I know some of the OGs were in there kind of talking, going back and forth, what this should be actually for. In my opinion I really think this is for the newcomers because the newcomers get directed to that hex hex uh, main chat and telegram. So I personally think it's for the newcomers. I know some of the older guys were talking about like, oh, well, we don't want to waste all our time onboarding. But look, guys, at the end of the day, this is what that's for. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I don't go into the main hex telegram anymore. It's madness. It is. It's nothing but new users in there just flooding the channel. So I think it's good to be in there, help answer any questions they have. Um, Take some time out of your day to help them. Don't be selfish with taking up too much time on the mic. Answer their questions. I, I've been a part of two really good onboarding experiences as of last night. This uh, young lady uh, named Mel, she had she was seemed very intelligent, very articulate. She seemed like a damn reporter, but she had very good questions all lined up, and we took turns answering her questions. Great. She shouted out Richard about how awesome the voice chat was and the community was at helping her. So that was awesome. Everyone did a great job. And then today, uh, one of our newcomers was Hi Ho. And he he said he's around 50 years old, just got into Hex. Unfortunately, his grandfather just passed away, left him in some inheritance, came across Hex, looking to invest and just had some good questions. And again, the community stepped up, able to answer all his questions. And a lot of cool stuff that he mentioned, which I thought was really neat, was just he mentioned how sincere everyone felt as they were trying to help, how he's gone to other communities and he didn't receive anything like this. And that's what really makes us unique, right, guys? It's open arms, our sincerity. We truly are out there to help everyone to share and what we found, right? Because it truly is a gift to get you out of that red race, regardless of when you come in. So that being said, the negatives of what I've seen in the voice chat. I've seen people come in there and maybe air out their 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 laundry, uh, their the kind of beefs they might have with individuals. I've seen people take offense to certain things. I mean, obviously this is going to happen, right? Like you can't have sixty something people in one group and we all get along, we all agree. You're going to have conflicts, but try to reduce it to some degree, guys, because you do have sure. new users and they're listening. I get the conflict and everything. But try to be the more mature adult. We have the Strape channel for you guys that are unaware, S-T-R-A-P-E and Telegram. Go in there. You can have any conversation you want unrelated to Hex. You can you can fight it out, do whatever you want. But it just kind of, to me personally, it looks bad when the community is in there fighting it out in the middle of the main Hex chat. It's unnecessary. I get it. Sometimes there's issues that need to be discussed. But you can have that privately, or if you really feel the need to make it public, go do it in a channel that's not the main Hex channel. That's how I, I feel on the stance. You're more than welcome to your opinion. Obviously, I'm not an administrator, so I will not be regulating the chat. But at the end of the day, I try to keep it hex focused. And if we start going too off into the weeds, I'll I'll usually pipe up and try to get us back on track. But 
Um, just some stuff to keep in mind, a little housekeeping as you guys are going through the voice chat. But by all means, I've seen more often than not amazing things come from it. And I think it's going to be a cool way to get new users on board, answer their questions. And moving forward, I think it's going to be a very useful tool. And I think it'll get more streamlined as they add more features to it. I, I really do. I really do like the voice chat. Hmm. Sorry, I went on a tangent. I took up. <laughs> I just did. I just did. I agree, I man. I agree. Yeah. But it was cool, right? It's like Children of the Grave said, super addictive. I spent all day in there. Didn't do a lick of work. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, I've already done what I need to do for uh, for the day. So I was I was all in the chats today. And it, it really is addictive. <sighs> but, yeah, voice chat. I liked it. Um. What else do you guys want to uh, touch on? One thing I want to cover real quick is, um, I mean, so I know like the theoretical maximum supply for Bitcoin is like 21 million after all the blocks are mined. And, and I mean, today, like the total supply of T-shares is like 11 million, you know? And uh, it's just it's just cool to think of that ratio, kind of like a two to one of, of like where the actual T-share value can go in the future. And... We've already seen on graph uh, graphx.rocks the just US dollar cost of T-share, you know, spike up significantly. I mean, right now it's at 293.44 uh, dollars per per one T-share. And the, the cool thing is, is the way that Hex is designed is, you know, Bitcoin's kind of designed, you know, people say like the supply is going to be 21 million. But as far as Hex goes, the actual uh, deflationary aspect of the T-share I think comes into realization a lot sooner than people think, say, for Bitcoin. So the economics of Hex, the way that Richard has designed it, is just uh, truly innovative. And it's awesome to see that, you know, in U.S. dollar price, just the Hex versus U.S. dollar, we've gone up 352x. But the actual share price has gone from like, what, like 60 cents to like 300 something dollars, which is even significantly more. So it's all about the shares. And it's really cool that. You can stake, uh, you know, for one day and, and get that base rate, or you can stake up for 5,555 days or 3,641 days and get a T-share for a third of the price. It's all about the T-shares. And it's the funny thing too, right, with onboarding. It's also, it's the most complex, it's the most important, and it's the it's the trickiest to get your point across on what a T-share is. And it's, it's almost like taboo to even try to get the newcomers with T-shares, but it's hard because a little part of you realizes how important it is. So you want to just regurgitate everything you can. So they, they realize how valuable it is, but I think it just comes with time. The community continue to put out that good education and they'll, they'll eventually, eventually get it. Just like all of us, it took us probably over the entire year of the adoption amplifier and going through this to really understand and grasp what t-shares are and how valuable they are. And this kind of brings us up to another question I just saw in here by blue bum. Uh, maybe talk about the pros and cons of launch uh, one year again or something shorter for Pulse. So how would you guys feel about maybe doing a kind of like adoption amplifier style for the Pulse release? That's it's kind of different. I haven't thought too much about it, mainly because I've used up all my damn dry powder <laughs> over this past year and a half on, uh, on Hex. So I haven't really considered the idea of another year long um, launch for Pulse. Uh, I find that might be an issue with just, we're trying to make this because it's a, it's a solution to a problem, right? We want that chain to be out as soon as possible to deal with these fees. So I, I foresee that just right away being maybe an obstacle to it, to doing a one year release. In addition to hexagons already have spent most of their dry powder, uh, purchasing hex throughout the past year and a half. And then on top of that, we're, this is to fix an immediate problem that we have on the Ethereum blockchain. So for me, prolonging the distribution of uh pulse coins or or this adoption amplifier kind of style i don't think it's really necessary i think you can still have a pre-planned big payday event which will garner all the attention eyeballs money everything we need and i think you can do that with the set date not necessarily uh dragging out for another year uh, as far as a adoption kind of amplifier like we had in the first year what do you guys think yeah, so for the <clears throat> for the adoption amplifier, I mean, it's you, you'll so you'll I don't to, at least to the same extent you'll you won't be able to recreate 
like basically what already exists with Hex. So from my perspective, like the big payday event, I just view that as Hex. Like the other, there, you, you can do like essentially reboots of that stuff. Um, I just think there's diminishing value to it over over time because it's uh, the first thing that does it, you, it's kind of like the whole alpha dominance thing. So um, I don't know. I guess it, it for, for I, f what I'm more excited on is just using uh, Pulse Chain as, as effectively a good side chain to Ethereum if you need the low gas fees. Uh, I'm pretty neutral as far as things like Big Payday. Um, I think we've already had that, you know, with Hex and stuff, and we're well past that. Uh, I think it's actually an advantage now that Hex is well past the Big Payday because, um, you know, we've 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 got we've gotten to a point where a lot of that supply has basically changed into like longer term positions, things like that. So you, you can do reboots of it. I just don't think you'll have the same necessarily momentum as what Hex had just because Hex is basically the, it was the first one to do um, that huge buildup over that period of time. I, I kind of think of the whole, I mean, maybe this doesn't really apply in that type of scenario, but it's, it's kind of the dilemma of like what I consider even though Pulse Chain by no means is it's not a clone of, of Hex at, at all, like whatsoever. Uh, but there's there's certain attributes that um, <clears throat> the coins that do things for the first time and they're the originals, you can't really re-replicate like an original, things like that. So um, I don't know. I, I, I kind of view more uh, as like the dedicated, per like having options to, to stake coins and stuff like that on another network's really cool. I, I think there's other there's other things like um, if if the if the if the idea is to uh, create this network that doesn't have let's say this um, stigma around it, like with the branding. So if you if you call it Pulse Chain, you might even just be better off introducing new things that. Um, <clears throat> don't give somebody like a negative perception or something like that. Cause it, it, it's going to take time for the market. Even today, even though hex is doing incredible on the price charts, it's going to take time for the market to um, get to a point where it, it comes to terms with um, everything that's happened. So uh, it's kind of the whole thing where if you're, if the goal is to kind of uh, have like a, a, a chain that, um, you know, you call it a, a different name so that people don't, you know, throw things at it, then, um, you may want to introduce different mechanisms that are just outright original um, and then just have its own mutual benefit for uh, Pulse Chain. I, I actually disagree with you a little bit on as far as mm -hmm. whether it can essentially hold up to what Big Payday was. I honestly think it could be bigger than Big Payday for a couple of reasons. One, mm -hmm. Hex has already proven itself, right? Like it was the number yeah. one appreciating asset of 2020. As much as the haters want to sit there and talk shit, uh, I've seen a noticeable change over this past year and a half. Like they're coming around. Like they really are. I'm seeing more TA done on Hex. I'm seeing people recognizing our price chart for what is, which we'll we'll talk about a little bit later uh, tonight as well. And people are, regardless of whether they hate Richard, they love Richard, hate Hex, love Hex. I see everyone starting to come around, and the price is starting to show that as well, right? Like we are we are solidly holding anywhere between 1.5 and 1.7 cents right now. And so I believe in the future when we really, when Pulse Chain becomes a thing, if there is some sort of big payday event, knowing Richard, there's going to be some sort of pump, pump a middle with the release of a, a forking chain like that. So I believe there's going to be something implemented along those lines. I think it has the ability mm. to surpass what big payday does because now we're proven, right? Everyone saw as much as they might hate Hexicans or they might hate Richard, they saw what Hex did and they saw what, what can be done and what Richard has done and what he's done in the space. And regardless of whether they like him or hate him, I think you're going to have people, whether they come out and openly support it and invest in it or secretly invest in it on the sidelines. I think we're going to have, inc I think we're going to have a much larger audience that produce that participates in this pulse chain on the release. If there's going to be an airdrop or what have you. And I think it could be tremendous. I think it could be way bigger than anything big payday was. So I, I kind of disagree on that point. I think we might see some truly crazy, crazy numbers. And then if Richard can link that to price appreciation in hex, which I think he will mo most likely do, mm -hmm. I think it could be absolutely tremendous for the price. Yeah. You know, you, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Brad. Okay, real quick. So yeah, you mentioned like hex is kind of kicking ass and taking names. I mean, right now we're at uh, like 1.7 pennies, uh, almost 
you know, one, uh, almost two pennies. And anyways, I got a coworker in recently, like below a penny, a smidge below a penny, like 85% of a penny. And anyways, it's, it's cool when you can get someone into an investment and especially that's getting them a return on their investment, a yield. And uh, the price is already kind of pumped like a two X from where they got in. And now they're like raving about hex to the people that they know. And there just is like a network effect and, just like Bitcoin kind of had, but this is like more accelerated because now the traditional finance system is kind of coming to grips that uh, that this isn't really going away anytime soon. And with things like Hex atta attacking like the second largest financial product of the traditional system, it's pretty cool to see like Hex really catching on and uh, just imagine what it's going to do in the future is even more mind blowing. So uh, mm -hmm. it's awesome where we're at. Yeah, there, there's gonna be there's gonna be a ton of speculation around it for sure. Because if you have uh, uh, so in terms of the pump of mentals, I'm not like for, that's something I'm not really concerned on. Like I'm just assuming it's gonna have some really good pump of mentals built into pull chain. Um, I'm just speculating, or I should say, I'm I'm just keeping it neutral as to what those pump of mentals may end up uh, looking like. Uh, I I think by default, like if you if you let's say you know when because uh, it's going to take time before uh pulse chain let's say gets released into the wild i know richard <laughs> mentioned about six months if if everything um if everything goes well but not to keep that as a firm date obviously because it's it is software and, and software is is hard uh i i'm i'm expecting that by the time let's say uh pulse chain, pulse chain is ready to be released into the wild uh, you could be looking at basically a price of hex that's multiples upon multiples, much, much higher than what it is today. And even that itself will cause a ton of speculation across the entire market. So um, there is going to be lots of speculation around it. And the the better performing hex is doing, the more speculation that's going to kind of, it's going to basically create a good feedback loop for, for market speculation. Markets love to speculate. So um, there's going to be certainly... From my viewpoint, I do think there is going to be a lot of interest. Uh, it's just ultimately a question as to what you know those pump mentals. We, we I think we've had some hints with like the the burning with uh, uh, EIP fifteen fifty nine having something like that to burn um, the coin on chain when you're if you're submitting a transaction or something or broadcasting a transaction. Uh, it it's just the the pump mentals could be much better than even mentals. just that yeah it could be <laughs> pulse mentals so uh, i i i i i'm i'm just on the assumption that they're going to be that they're going to be really good uh i just don't know what they're what they're going to be i agree it's fun right it's fun to speculate but at the end of the day mm -hmm. we don't we don't know we don't know yeah but what we do know is what hex is doing right now and the price chart and how amazing like oh, I, it's don't, incredible. I don't i don't think anyone and we we've had a lot of backroom discussions mm -hmm. Like no one is selling. We have some traders taking advantage of these little swing trades, but other than that, no one is selling anymore. A lot of these weak hands have been flushed out. A lot of these big wallets are near empty, and we are we are holding these these new price floors around this one mm -hmm. and a half cent pretty damn easy. It seems like dips dips are getting bought up so quickly. Like I keep kicking myself for not putting limited orders in. Uh, to pick up more hex because the mm. dip just gets eaten up way too quickly. I you'd have to right. be watching the chart twenty four seven just to buy them without doing putting a limit. Mm. On it. Yeah, that's true. Like that that is uh, I, I mean at this point I I don't think we're really going to revisit the the one cent like the lower one cent levels anymore. Um, to me the chart is looking like it's setting up to enter its next expansion and uh, if if for anybody that hasn't watched uh, Donovan Jolly. Uh, he's a, a trader on crypto Twitter. Uh, he posted a, a really good video. Um, I recommend checking it out. He's in general, he he's good with he's really good with charts. He's very good at identifying uh, fractals. He he understands things like market cycles, market structure. Overall, very good video. Uh, and he mentions the the three wave, and <clears throat> that is uh, potentially like the 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 third impulse in market cycles is very parabolic when it when it finally gets going. So the prices can go much higher than um, what people are anticipating. Like I see, you know, targets of four to five cents. It can go much higher than that. Um, once it goes into price discovery, it's indeterminate just how high it can go. Uh, you're gonna see 
all sorts of price predictions. And um, at the end of the day, like the price predictions, they're all arbitrary. Nobody can possibly know exactly what price target it's it's going to hit exactly. Uh, but what I do know is that it's it's going to be very fast when it when it actually does it, and it's probably gonna. Um, go much higher than people are expecting. Um, the, th the thing with like charting and stuff is you can kind of spot trends starting to develop before they happen. But once uh, an asset goes into expansion, um, you, there's no like real way you can predict like exactly what price things can go because that that's kind of the nature with, you know, markets and stuff. If people could reliably predict prices, then, um, you know, it, you, you wouldn't have speculation and things like that, that, <laughs> yeah, no that shit. caused the prices to go up. So <laughs> that yeah, you're not without yeah. saying, but a lot of people yeah. don't realize that. Yeah. So that, that's, that's often the, um, you're going to see lots of price predictions. I think at least if you're looking at, um, you know, some really high valuations, I do think it's going to go very high. I'm not going to put like a, bullseye target on it because i don't know and nobody else knows they, they don't i but it but it is going to go um very high very quickly violent breakout um so i'm excited for it we could actually look at uh there's some really good charts to reference off of if you guys are interested but, in seeing yeah let's some, let's, uh, do, let's it. do it he's not, he's not gonna give away the golden chart but we'll go <laughs> we'll go over some other stuff but um just while you pull those up uh look into crypto just to mm -hmm. touch on what you said like donovan right like He's, he's not a super large YouTuber, but he's more massive than any of us, right? Like he has 65,000 uh, subscribers. So like, this is what I'm saying. When people are starting to come around, it's starting to be okay to talk about Hex, where in the past, people will get absolutely blasted if they try to do it. Their, their channel, people would be afraid to put it on their channel. They would get called scammer. Like the narrative is starting to change. It's starting to swing. And mm -hmm. that's that's why I think in the future when Pulse Chain releases the pump of middles or the pulse of mentals that go with yeah. it, it's going to be, I think it has the potential to be bigger than anything we've seen thus far because everyone's, the narrative of Hex is being a scam is getting washed away. It's starting mm -hmm. to be okay to be, uh, for these crypto influencers to talk about now. And we're, yeah. we're starting to see it. He's one of the first and there'll be mm -hmm. many more to come. And it's... Right. We're gonna we're gonna see some crazy price action that follows with it. And I'm yeah. sure looking to crypto is about to show us. Yeah, the, and and uh, actually, yeah, let's let's go into that because we'll pull up we'll pull up a really good reference here. Uh, really, Ethereum's first cycle is still very much on track for uh, the hex price chart. It's just there's so many similarities for it. So let's let me do a share screen here. All right, I got you. Sweet. So, right. uh, yeah, so we have the price chart here. This is the weekly weekly chart for Ethereum. And what we're going to look at is its first cycle because then you'll start to see why, uh, why you know, Donovan Jolly uh, is looking at this being the, the third wave um, that I think is pretty much spot on um, with the analysis that he has for Hex. So on the Ethereum price chart, we're currently over here at in turn if you mirror it over to the hex price chart so during ethereum's first cycle uh you could consider this uh the one wave so you had impulse corrective two wave three wave impulse four wave correction five wave impulse so uh during the entire market cycle ethereum had three impulsive waves wave one wave three and wave five and generally in markets, wave three uh, can actually be the most parabolic and uh, fastest, fastest appreciating, um, largest growth potential. Wave three is so parabolic uh, in market cycles and it was for Ethereum during its, its previous market cycle. So the reason why I'm saying the price can go higher than most people are expecting is if you take a measure move for Ethereum during its first wave impulse, to the top, it was about a 2,700% move. Now, <laughs> if you take the a measured move from the bottom of corrective wave two to the top of wave three, this was a 4,800% move wow. on the Ethereum price chart. And also 
on the hex price chart this so this 2700% on ethereum is actually less than the growth uh, hex had during its first wave impulse uh the hex, the hex chart actually did uh it grew faster uh, so meaning the percentage gains were actually much higher on the hex price chart compared compared to that of ethereum's first cycle so uh so long as the the cycles map over in accordance to ethereum's first cycle it's not it's totally not out of the question where the percentage gain from the bottom of its corrective two wave to the top of its three wave can actually exceed the first wave target and that's why you know if if you're looking at oh uh, by, by the way not financial advice like <laughs> I, don't, I don't i don't know how high it's it, it's gonna go I, I just look at patterns in the market uh because a lot of this behavior tends to rhyme through every market cycle you just get these reoccurring fractals that's what they are um and mm. that is why i i truly believe hex is going to go higher than what people are expecting um i don't know what exactly that price target is but it can go extremely, extremely high. And, and if you notice Ethereum during its last cycle, uh, during its corrective wave four, all it really did was consolidate in a, a pretty tight range and, and basically bull flag up until uh, its fifth impulse uh, leading up to the blow off top. Um, yeah. So depending on the timing of when these types of movements occur, you could end up with this scenario where you have like this... Um, this absolutely mind-blowing hex move. And then if there's also a lot of speculation surrounding something like Pulse Chain, you can then get more speculation um, that just leads to further buying pressure. So uh, it's the the macros are excellent. Like they're, they look absolutely phenomenal. Um, so uh, there, what, what I'm anticipating is similar to Ethereum during its three wave, there's going to be a trader slash whales. There's, there, there are going to be wallets in the Hex ecosystem that today, as of this video, have a lot of Hex. And they're going to get wrecked on this move up because they're going to... Look, they're going to look how yeah. quickly they get left behind. Like. Yeah. E even from this move here, when Ethereum... Uh, they, there, there was a significant selling pressure here that they thought, um, oh, this must be the top of this move. No, it, it went up basically another uh, 700, uh, 725 percent. So that's that's uh, an eight point two five x on the price for Ethereum. So uh, any, and they never any, saw those prices again either. They didn't uh, during no. the during the bear market. Ethereum did not fall back. Uh, let's actually let's actually make this a uh, different color here, just that's to put nice. it in perspective. Uh, Ethereum never retraced to uh, right right in purple. Ethereum never retraced to this target ever again. Um, so, the so when you guys want to take profits, keep that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> so, mind. Um, yeah, just be just be rational as to how you're doing things. Um, the safest play in the end, on in terms of the macros, is the t-shares. That's yep. the preservation of that's going to be really important. And um, regardless of this video, uh, I, I've just I've I've seen enough in this market. I. Uh, there's plenty of instances of people getting left behind. It's going to happen again on the hex price chart from people either not buying or uh, trying to perfect their moves. There's going to be um, there's going to be huge opportunity costs later uh, for those that just are um, that have let's say extreme levels of greed. It's going to happen for 100. So um, it's not going to be me. Like I I know where this is going. Um, and I'm going to let the market ultimately decide just how high it's going to go, but it is going to be absolutely beautiful. Um, during this next move up, I do not think Hex is going to get bounced out of the top 10 anymore. Like, I think it's going to get wedged somewhere in the top 10 for the remainder of the market cycle and, and just perform, um, extremely well this year. So, uh, congr crazy. congratulations to anybody that's basically <laughs> made it this far, cause you're going to see some pretty mind blowing things this year. 100 100%. So you you think uh this third wave could be the largest wave we've seen in hex? I think date? so. Yeah, well. because it, if you look at the <laughs> the consolidation that's happened, um it it was almost a year now since that first really big impulse and the market structure for hex, it's if you're not in position, you're going to miss basically the entire move because of how quickly and violent it is. It's the same thing on Ethereum's price chart. Ethereum has very similar types of movements where 
it's not doing anything for a very long period of time, and then it goes up like 10x. So it, it's just different coins have different types of structures, and Hex is one that has it's it's had such a big. Uh, it's gone through such a big redistribution and, and reaccumulation. Um, a lot of supply got bought up after big payday. There's less supply coming into the market today compared comparatively during the first impulse back when it was during the adoption amplifier. So um, to me, I just see less supply. There's a plenty of wallets that already got washed out that can now no longer even buy even half their stack back because they sold at the bottom. Um, <laughs> And this, the macros are just absolutely tremendous. And th this is this is the um, this is the advantage that the community has, like with people even tracking things through the the, the hex trading telegram, because you you get these insights into these wallets that effectively get <clears throat> they get left behind um, at some point in time, and that's that's likely going to happen, I think, basically by the summer. So <clears throat> I'm super bullish on it. It's going to do... <laughs> if you couldn't um, tell. It's going to do... It's going to do... Yeah, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think it's going to do absolutely incredible. Like, I, I really... Um, I really do believe, in even just in terms of the growth potential, I really do believe PAX is going to outperform the vast majority of this market this year. And... <clears throat> just, just think about it, guys. A this could be the largest wave we've seen in hex to date. Like that's absolutely blows my mind that we can, we can see something greater than what we've already seen. Like, you know how, how insanely rich you guys are going to be. Do not, do not fall for that trap. Like, like, uh, looking to crypto said people that are selling at one cent, two cent, like they they will get left behind and they have no chance of buying their bags back. It's the only way I can even relate it is kind of like how they say, I know they say in like traditional finance, like, there's like what, like five days in the market. If you're not in those days, then you you miss out on those gigantic movements. And obviously, that's probably that's probably ramped up to the hundredth degree in crypto. And if you're not if you're not in before before we take off, like you're not you're not coming back. We'll never come back yeah. to those levels again. And yeah. your one your one to two cent that you sold your bag mm -hmm. at, you you essentially left hundreds of millions of dollars on the table. Like that's mm -hmm. that's the disparity that you're really talking about selling now. Yeah, absolutely blows my mind. Yeah, and 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 even for because I'm I'm sure there's um, not that I would ever recommend this. Uh, there's going to be perhaps like certain instances where somebody perhaps may have been able to accumulate more coins like over time, things like that. But um, that kind of strategy works until it doesn't, because uh, once it doesn't, the the t shirts <laughs> the amount that, the amount that you lose is it's pretty incredible. You're just statistically. Um, all the odds are against you if you're not if you're not holding. For one, you have tax burdens against you. You have higher tax liabilities if you're if you're trying to basically make short term movements, things like that. Um, and then you just have basically math and statistics against you. Like you're just you're not going to beat the guy that just holds his bag over long periods of time and just accumulates during those really key periods. So um, again, people are going to get washed out. It's going to happen during this impulse, um, but but it's certainly not going to be me. <laughs> not. me either me either and you know hex gives you the tools to not be tempted right because i guarantee you everyone in this room would be tempted at 10 cents 20 cents 30 cents like you you a lot of you will be tempted along the way and i know i would be tempted as well and hex gives you the perfect feature to stop yourself from selling lock that shit up lock it up you yeah. have the next rev you have the next evolution in bitcoin and you have the ability to lock it away from yourself so when you see a thousand x return on your money you don't sell because guess what you might have that million two million three million x down the road that you're just not aware of it because you can't wrap your mind around the mm. fact that you're sitting on a million x because none yeah. of us can <clears throat> none of us yeah can. that is yeah that is a beautiful thing about big um, about hacks, right? Is with Bitcoin, you can time lock it, but it doesn't pay you an interest. It doesn't pay you an APY or incentive uh, incentive for doing so. But to your point, with hacks, not only do you save yourself from you know selling your whole bag and things like that, but you're also incentivized to get more coins and get paid in hex. You know, and so the beautiful thing is too is hex pumps like uh, like look into crypto mentions. We had the April 2020 pump that just never went back to that same price. And when you've got a decent bag of Hex and you've got some liquid, well, now if Hex 10Xs or 100Xs, like even if you were to realize gains, you wouldn't need to realize as many of them because the price multiplied so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll sell uh, Charlie Lee some coins at $3. <laughs> 
with a big stupid <laughs> smile on my face as uh, I do so. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what there, there's gonna uh, it's gonna be really funny later this year. There's gonna there's gonna be a, a couple people that are gonna have some explaining to do because um, you're gonna see the same type of uh, behavior again where you have this huge massive explosion in value and then they're going to try to like fud it when it's like doing a correction because um they're they're too ignorant to know things like market structure market cycle sub they just they just they don't understand like um they, they have basically complete ignorance when it comes to uh to charts things like that how this stuff um ends up growing over time so uh fortunately like there's for those that uh, definitely listen, like you, you, I think you do have essentially a a golden ticket for your future in ten to fifteen years. I mean, uh, just look at how far Bitcoin has gone in just ten years, and uh, we haven't even seen fifteen yeah, years yet. The, the, <laughs> Another the, five the whale, years of Bitcoin. Yeah, like the the <laughs> whale bot. You, it's gonna it's going to get to a point where even things like the whale bot are gonna like start scaling in. Like you may think you're not necessarily like a whale by the market standards today but there's like levels to this shit and you could very much become like a a, a really big fish like a really big fish in the market where uh, people can only dream of having a stack like that so um that 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 and i and i and there just isn't any other <clears throat> there's just there isn't any other coin that has the supply locking that that hex does and that that's why even if we go back to what we were saying with pulse chain I still ultimately view something like Hex as a, as a really good store of value. And then uh, Pulse is, is something that could be complementary to that. So, um, and it just feeds into like more speculation, more price pumping. It's absolutely, it's absolutely glorious. Look at the opportunity cost guys. Like we're still relatively unknown. Like the crypto space knows about us. The narrative is starting to change here. So we're slowly starting to break through Break through gates, build bridges. We're doing mm. we're doing everything right. Like and then where we can't where we can't break through and we can't build a, we can't build around. We're we're literally building ourselves, right? Mm. So like we're we're coming up with all the solutions. Hex is becoming vertically integrated, and eventually those gates, uh, the bridges we build, everything that we've worked as a community to construct, like all the all this will eventually fall. And Hex will not only be known to the crypto space. But to traditional finance, to to your best friend, to their mom and dad, to their grandparents, like he <laughs> Richard has talked about this. Hex, he is seeking world domination. The crypto space is so damn tiny. We are looking to integrate this into traditional finance. And I can I can only imagine when the gates fall in the actual crypto space, how well Hex is going to do. We're going to see that fifty cent uh, price point easy. We're going to see that dollar multiple dollar price point. Imagine. 10, 15 years down the road when those last barriers to traditional finance fall down. And now Hex is one of the leading commodities and trading at grayscale, or maybe we have heart scale at that point. We have our own hedge fund where we're, where Hex is the main commodity. Imagine how rich, like the money that you guys are going to make, you're not going to be able to spend it. You're not going to be able to know what to do with it. You can, you will be able to own your own damn jet if you so choose. That golden yacht will actually become a thing. Everything that you've ever dreamed that you wanted, you'll be able to obtain, and then mm. you can do more than that, right? Like you can yeah. do good. You can do good. You can. We're gonna see that generational transference of wealth that we talked about because you guys are here now. You guys beat out the traditional finance uh, markets. You have the next revolutionary product, and these big fi uh, traditional finance investors and speculators—they don't even know about Hex yet. You guys are here before them. And that's going to enable you to be one of the largest transference of wealth that we've probably ever seen to this date. And money will become no obstacle. And I, lo I love every community member that we have in this space right now. And I know that we're going to do a lot of good with that money. After you have everything that you've ever wanted, you've helped out your family members. I know the quality and caliber of people that are in this space. And I know the kind of great things they can do once they're no longer burdened by financial stress and they have disposable income beyond which anything we've ever seen before at their disposal. Like I think there's going to be a lot of good that comes in the world down the road, maybe even just 10, 15 years, which is just a blink in the eye when you really think about it. And mm. I look forward to that day. I really do. I really do. Yeah. I like the, uh, I like the hex or the, the heart scale. That sounds really good. Heart I like scale. that name. Yeah. Cause it's, uh, 
I think I, if I, am I, I'm not sure if I'm wrong on this, but isn't a heart like isn't aren't hearts like a unit of well, of I mean, hex. you could yeah, of, yeah, of hex. I, I, I've seen that term used somewhere before where you have like you have basically a certain amount of hearts or something like that, which I thought was really cool. I thought I that think was, it, I think it's like the equivalent of Bibli <laughs> I could be wrong. Some of yeah. them, one of the OGs, feel free to correct me. Hearts might be like the equivalent of a Satoshi for hex. That's like exactly right. I could yeah. be completely it, wrong. I'm not sure. It's not, it sounds way better to you. Like if like oh, Satoshi's yeah. or Hearts. Hearts sounds way. Yeah. It's an awesome. That's an awesome. Awesome unit brand. Right yep. Well, Molly's totally correct. And even if you go to like the go.hex.com when you're mm -hmm. if you hover over your stake, it'll have like certain metrics like oh one T shares, you know one trillion. But then it'll say how many hearts you have as well. So uh, it's it's kind of interesting. You got the uh, the staked hearts, and then it'll be on the pulse chain and. It's uh, it's cool to see like uh, just the way that Hex is evolving because it really is a standalone product from all these other cryptocurrencies. I mean, it's not doing the promises and uh, future expectations of profit from from others. Like it's already launched as a uh, as a success, and so I think it's awesome that uh, you know whatever Richard builds as far as Pulse Chain and other things like that, possibly in the future. I think it'll be really cool and. You know, even possibly we were, uh, you know, made aware of that maybe the uh, the Economist magazine might have a ad this Friday uh, regarding hacks, and so we saw the the Harry Dent and Richard Hart, and then we also saw the uh, Jane King and I think like Fred Shattuck or something like that, uh, which which is kind of legitimizing hacks more to the financial system and, and allowing those generations of of all ages to to get into it and to understand the concept because they remember when the bank would pay them an interest to hold the money in there and now it's just non-existent yeah like you like you spoke to with those those interviews like with dent and, and we talked about this on the last episode i believe but we have lex mm -hmm. freeman come in the door and you can you can just see the hatred coming out for the rest of the crypto space that richard hart is even being interviewed and I love I see I love seeing people outside of the crypto space recognize Richard and his product for what it is, right? Like he Richard is very intelligent. Whether you agree with how he carries himself or his philosophies, there's very little merit to denying his intelligence. The guy is very, mm -hmm. yeah. very, very smart, regardless of whether or not you agree on his stances or not. It doesn't take much of a fool to realize his intelligence. I believe I believe he is he's <laughs> look what he's done right like he's and he, he's a perfect mix right like you have vitalik who is essentially a savant when it comes to coding he solidity essentially created his own language ethereum an amazing amazing uh project or product whatever you want to call it and he's amazing at code right and building building essentially a, a, the crypto space around after bitcoin came along ethereum really opened the floodgates for what is possible and now you have you have a beautiful mixture of what Richard is. He's not only has the intelligence to learn to code and be able to go tit for tat with some of the leading leading developers that we have in the space. He has a brilliant marketing mind because he's he's built businesses. He's retired from a very young age or his early twenties. He's just the perfect perfect machine. And then on top of that. He's more eloquent and articulate in his words than pretty much anyone else in the space. Like I, I've yet to see anyone that can dethrone him in a debate or even come close. Like I, I and I'll, I rack my brain to think of people that could stand up to him in a debate. And there's very few that come to mind and it should even come down to that. Right. Because like Lex Freeman is going to bring a great, great podcast when it does happen. And I think it will happen. And it's going to just be two brilliant minds sitting down and they'll they'll eventually talk about hex but they're going to talk about a lot of other things and it's going to be a very interesting interesting podcast that everyone has the ability to learn from whether you hate richard love richard hate hex love hex you're going to have a plethora of different topics that you can learn from and probably better your life and that's what that's that's one of the reasons that we know richard's intentions a lot of us are very good at reading people and we've seen we've seen probably on the screen years of content worth of Richard from the start when he was just doing purely self-help videos when he didn't have to, when he was a retired millionaire and he had nothing better to do than try to educate people to better their lives, give them self-help videos for free, write a sci-fi book to better their lives, the overall health mentally and physically. 
and now creating a, fi a financial product, Hex, that might free everyone that's involved today from the rat race. Like, holy shit. <laughs> like, that dude is leaving behind a legacy that any of us would be lucky to even come close to rivaling. And I don't think mm -hmm. we will because it's truly something remarkable. That's probably not going to be repeated for generations. When he says this stuff is Nobel prize worthy, it really <laughs> is because look at all of us right now, the lives that he's changing. And then that all branches out from us to other people, just like we were talking earlier. Like he truly is deserving of that Nobel, that prize. I really do believe so. Yeah, that's uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, Rich, Richard's also playing. Um, he's he's in this market on on a longer time scale. So uh, this is actually a conversation I had with uh, a DC, but I I specifically said like Richard's going to win. Like he's he's he knows what he's doing. He's been he's been in the market for a while, um, and we're already seeing it with what hex is doing today so it's absolutely incredible and it, it puts in perspective actually just uh um exactly what motley said like what he's done is something a very like stuff like that actually literally changes the world because you have people that let's say end up getting um, immense amounts of wealth but now they have the opportunity to actually do things that could also let's say generate value in the world so uh, i know this is like a kind of a, a philosophical like discussion but it's true like that's actually what leads to like change and like progression of society like over longer periods of time um <clears throat> and it comes down to basically what people effectively do with their wealth so uh every person has like their theoretical limits um i pr i know where mine's at like i've been in this market more so as a, a value investor um basically identifying huge opportunities which i i certainly saw with hex uh before even like the big the big payday i just saw like it i just saw really good things with it um and uh it kind of puts into perspective like it is you you have um there's gonna be, there's gonna come a point in your life especially for the people that got you know that that were here let's say prior to like big payday e even like the very early ogs that um got in very early uh, soon, like right after the the adoption amplifier period launched, like within like the first, let's say, 20 days or something like that, uh, there's going to come like a point in time. And this this is actually a really interesting discussion that was going on in the, the Hex Telegram is there's going to be people that effectively you're going to hit uh, you're going to hit levels of t uh, complete financial freedom. And then you're going to have to find other things that motivate you in life. So in the case for for Richard Hart, for example, um, he's very interested in in things like uh, basically uh, promoting longevity, like advances to things like I guess it could relate to like biotech, things like that. So um, you're gonna you're gonna you're going to get to a certain point where you're going to have to find those things that um, ultimately motivate you to do other things. Um, but this is basically a huge stepping stone where you'll 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 have so much more opportunity as a result of it because. I really do believe, like in in my mind, I, I see the scales even within the the current uh, staking ladders in Hex. Like you have uh, squids, dolphins, sharks, whales, so on. Uh, I really do see a lot of parallels to certain positions within those ranks and how that relates to to what Bitcoin is today. Except I'm looking at this 15 years from now, and even even let's say squids that are in um, the rankings today are going to have massive amounts of wealth in 15 years like i really do believe that so um that's why uh if you look at things over very long time frames anybody that tries to perfect their moves over that period of time is likely going to get left behind because statistically the odds are just against them um they just are so uh just look at the opportunity that you have if you're getting hex under two pennies i still think it's massively massively undervalued right now um, and that time is running out. Like there's only like, so much time like to get to, yeah. like tonight yeah. Wasabi, like tonight, yeah. like they, yeah. they literally just sent the chat. Someone just did 140 K buy from one guy and we're, we're literally pumping up to like 1.8 cents, uh, as we speak. So yeah. <laughs> it is, it's coming quick. And I, I know we've had this discussion off air as well. Like 
this really might be your last week. <laughs> like it really, yeah. it really, it really could. This could be the last week, guys. We mm-hmm. we were talking about it all, off air, and like this might be your last week to get some buys in because I think we're gonna break through all time highs. And just like uh, looking to crypto said, it's really price discovery from there. It's anyone's guess. Totally. And we're we're on the cusp yeah. of wave three, mm-hmm. which is gonna be larger than any wave we've seen thus far. Yeah, so, we we yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we're, pro- we're probably gonna see like even even aside from the usd pair i really do believe that we're going to also see new all-time highs versus uh major pairs like bitcoin and ethereum too when you track things like relative performance so uh by design and and uh and even just uh what i'm what i'm looking at is i really do believe hex is again going to outperform the majority of this market and you're going to see that reflect itself versus like major pairings um in the market because there just simply isn't that much supply um that's available to buy so uh it's i don't know again this is once it goes into price discovery um it can do some pretty wild things it's and uh we we saw what what ethereum did last cycle and we're seeing that same type of pattern play out again on the 1.85 <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is nuts this is a serious <laughs> pump <laughs> so exciting on staker app just just refreshing and and the cool thing about hex is Sure, there's like no future expectations, stuff like that. But what you can guarantee from the smart contract itself is uh, based on your T-shares that you have, you're going to get some sort of daily payout. Now, whatever the payout per T-share is, obviously, there's so many factors. But I tell you what, man, I've, I've never been so excited about saving for the future. And it's awesome to be able to like have that invigoration again. I mean, Hexologist just posted recently that... Uh, one of the CDs was paying like half a percent interest. And it's like, man, mm. things like hacks are really just kicking ass and taking names when you compare it to not only other cryptocurrencies, but even just traditional CDs. It's it's doing amazing. And this is yeah. just the beginning. I mean, you guys mentioned Richard Hart. I mean, he, yeah, he retired before Bitcoin was invented. He, you know, was working with the Sens and, and filming the Sens uh, foundation and helping them edit. And so the type of person he is, is uh, someone with a big heart. And like Motley mentions, like, at a certain point, a lot of us are going to get to that uh, position maybe sooner than later of like, you have so many hundreds of X and so much wealth that like, hey, now it's just time to, uh, you know, put it to work or get back or, you know, make other people's lives uh, impacted. So Richard's done mm-hmm. that to all of us. Yeah, like whatever, whatever interest you're getting now on your stakes. So <laughs> right now, I think you're getting paid about 5.7, 5.8, 5.8 hex per T-share. Uh, during the next bear market, because I, I know there's there's people in the community that are making a pretty substantial amount daily, monthly, um, and just think about like over longer periods of time, those interest payments are going to literally start to like multiply. It's like mul- you get the multiples too, because like if you have the the scaling on the expansion, you also have that scaling on the. Um, the interest payouts. Now, there there is of course going to be more uh, fifteen year stakes that happen that that um, pull down. Let's say your uh, the hex per T share that the daily payout, I guess per per T share. But um, it doesn't matter because the the growth price on the price charts is going to be yeah. so massive that um, it's going to vastly outweigh. Um, any kind of uh, depreciations you may have on the payout per T-share just due to the demand of more people wanting to stake. So uh, it's, you know, whatever you're getting paid now um, in terms just, of your, your daily payouts, just multiply just it by, it. it's, at least, just, yeah, just at least, double it, at least double it yeah. <laughs> and just put that, put that into perspective. And that's, that's considering like, you're considering also low points, like potentially in the next, a bear market you're going to go into like another expansion phase again and then like it just gets to stupid levels after that so uh longer time frames are going to win they just they just are this is this is literally like one of the best forms of money period like it's it's so good 100 percent, 100 percent. this is absolutely nuts and i'm pretty sure everyone here is very fortunate to to have found hex and to be involved in hex now like God, it's it's just it's amazing. There's just nothing, nothing's ever existed like this product uh, till now, and we're all we're all fortunate, regardless of when you found it, to be here now. Like this is mm. amazing. Oh, we mean Sin Link. All right. Well, it looks like DC's coming. He says Sin Link, but he's part of our group chat, so I don't <laughs> understand. All right, I will send you the link. All right, guys, DC's coming to take us the rest of the way to Saturn. 
Hell yeah. The man, the myth, the legend. On his way. All right. Oh, man. It's been a long day. Between the voice chats, this absolutely mad pump we're on right now, like... It's exhausting making this much money doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, you know, get your emotions going, you know? Yeah, man. I am I am tapped out today. I am tapped out in a good way. Oh, what's up, Bitfinesse? Expansion phase, that's right. Makes him shiver. Oh, okay, what we got here? Da -da 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 -da. Uh, in the chat earlier this week <laughs> yeah mark Avelli, i heard you're going ham in there <laughs> do what you gotta do just keep it uh keep it really hey you dirty sea dog streaming hey. without me god damn it i found the minute i find out about this you guys uh, streaming without me. eat my dick yeah. <laughs> you, knew, you knew you <laughs> you knew when to be what's here what's up bud good to see you man hey what's up dude sorry i didn't mean to scream in your ears brand you're <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Damn, I see you you're all calmed up, ready to take us to Saturn. Yes, sir, man. I've got the I've got the moon suits in, in route. I should have a bunch of moon suits here in about a day or two. Hell yeah. Nice, dude. Hell yeah. I like How the are you? I feel like it's been a lifetime since I've seen you and if you haven't noticed, Hex is almost at two cents. So uh this, welcome. <laughs> The, the, this happens every dude i get sad every time I, I i go away from hex it always pumps and i come back it goes sideways so I I should stay the fuck <laughs> don't away. say well actually i don't know i wouldn't mind like a dip but uh maybe that's blasphemy to say right now but yeah we're we we've been we've been talking about probably the last half hour like hex is hex is prime loaded and shit afterburners are kicking in like this shit's about to go into the third <clears> phase <throat> as was, as looking to crypto was talking about Dude, I'm 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 a little spooked out right now with one thing. Like, fuck, man. I, I was so there's something I didn't mention in the course for the guys who were in the course, but um, the so it was it was it was rumors that we they were going to increase like the gas rates and stuff for for like the disk space and stuff like that Richard had talked about, but it, I didn't see any evidence that they were going to actually do it. Like I thought maybe it might happen after EIP fifteen fifty nine or something, mm. and they are going to do it in about like yeah. two and a half weeks. So I was yeah. like, "Oh shit, <laughs> that's not good." <laughs> yeah, I mean good. they they, yeah. they they posted that they were they were going to be launching in April. I mean that's that's yeah. what's forcing our hands right now with this Ethereum fork. So yeah, Th Oops. that's <laughs> <laughs> damn. Because like the most I paid for an end stake is like one hundred and forty dollars. So Jesus Christ, on that going up even more. That's like what is that like? You... Ugh. Wait, how can I yeah. how can I just take you down? How are you gonna come in here and just start fudding? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! Who the goddamn is our Saturn move back? Wait, 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 wait! Hold up! Wait, hold up. I can redeem myself. Yeah, I wasn't done yet. You see, you, you stopped the math in progress. Oh so my we, god! We, we built we build this this pyramid of fucking moon math on a pile of shit. So, uh, so, so, so what's going to happen is because they're the the, the the end stake and the emergency end stakes can't happen because it's so expensive because of the gas fees you'll probably end up having a lack of supply in the market so you'll this will actually help the hex price shoot up even more because people can't end stake or emergency end stake yeah i don't want it to shoot up for that kind of reason though I mean, but, it <laughs> but it is but it is yeah i well i yeah. I, I think that I, th I think that plays a little uh very little factor i mean maybe just some degree but i i think at this point no one's really willing to sell at these price levels. I really don't believe so. And I mean, I believe the chart kind of shows it at this rate. And I right. think I think we're really primed to absolutely destroy this all-time highs. Yeah. And like we were talking about earlier, it, after that, it's just price discovery. Bro, 185, 185. What the fuck is going on? This pump is nuts. This pump is nuts. I think we started the stream at like 1.7 or maybe even less, just a yeah. tad under. Like It's because it's daddy's back. That's what's going on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was going before you got here, but by all means, let's get through all-time highs by the end of the end of the stream. You you literally have 26 minutes to push it through all-time highs, so let's see what you got. Okay. Real quick, you guys mentioned gas fees, uh, 140 bucks. I mean, yeah, I remember paying like 120 or something like that at the most that I've ever yeah, we're not talking about gas fees anymore. All right, back to back to Saturn. 
<laughs> we're done with gas fees. We moved on there. Love you, Brad. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Back to DC since he's our honorary guest since he left us for so long. Send us to Saturn. Oh, I went for a pack of cigarettes, but I came back. <laughs> pack of Marlboros. Yeah. Does uh does anybody know if the I don't know if this was talked about at all, but the uh the current stakes that are on L1 ETH right now, are those I has anybody heard anything as far as being able to like uh mint your coins later on on pulse chain so if you let's say stake on ethereum today uh can you mint your coins later on pulse chain no we have we have no idea uh, okay okay that's we what I, no that's idea. what i figured yeah that would that's... just be pure speculation now why why are you yeah. going down that rabbit hole out of curiosity um i was just curious i'm uh mostly uh mostly for anybody new that's staking their coins you know just basically just some some things to be aware of there uh, cause it, it, it's all relative to how, m- how many coins that you're staking. There's a varying degree of like economic mass that's stored in each of the stakes. So for some people that have, you know, massively, massively large stakes, um, they're not necessarily as deterred by like the gas fees, but for somebody that's looking to stake, let's say, you know, one to $200 worth of coins, just be, just be aware of the, the gas fees right now on Ethereum that they're, um the gas fees are expensive so uh as of this video i don't know if like hypothetically if you stake your coins today i don't know if you can unstake those later on the pulse chain or if you have to stake them on the the pulse chain just and 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 the beautiful thing is like i think i as much as i was giving you a hard time for the gas fees and everything it it is good to advise that especially to any newcomers that are watching the stream which i don't know how many of there are probably not too many but if you are watching this as as we move forward for the time being consolidate what you have to invest stake it i know dc has talked about this before don't honestly if you're getting to hex now like you should be looking at at least a minimum of a year stake obviously you see much higher returns going further out consolidate your stakes stake long and as even though we having this conversation as far as fees go where solutions are in the works we're forking ethereum ethereum might eventually come up with solutions layer two side chains you name it like the gambit is coming to reduce fees so like this might Mm. this just might be essentially just a a memory of distant past when we're only like 2022 we might be looking back and it's no longer a thing and now we're Mm. we're paying pennies again to stake and stake transfer we're going to see new staking strategies because people are going to be able to take large amounts of hex and essentially be able to generate monthly income. They could do monthly stakes. They can do revolving mm-hmm. uh, quarterly stakes, three months, three months, three months, and they could have three of those going at the same time. So there's all kinds of new strategies and stuff I think that we're going to see kind of appear once these gas fees get eliminated. So this, I think this conversation that we're having now is just going to become a kind of a figment of our imagination. Mm-hmm. Like we're like, oh yeah, I remember back in 2021 after Hex launched and you know we went through that bull run and fees were ridiculous. Like remember that? And now we're like paying pennies for the end state mm-hmm. and your T share, your one T share, your half a T share sent out is more than enough safe uh, when it comes to end stake. So, and you really should, yeah. if you're making a stake now, it really shouldn't be anything less than a year. That's just, that's what a lot of us would advocate on the stream. I think, I believe. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, and I'm not, I'm definitely not worried about the, like long-term the the gas fees and all that like i <clears throat> i know there's a solution will get worked out one way or another uh and then um i'm just not it's it's i'm just keeping the 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 option open as to what the solution is going to look like but uh motley's right that is eventually going to become a thing of the past like the gas the gas fee dilemma isn't just affecting um things like x like this it actually affects all of DeFi on ethereum right now the reality is the um, those that have a lot of economic mass in Ethereum are the ones that are able to have access. Well, ease, they're they're able to access things like DEXs and all that, um, and not necessarily care about the gas fees that they're paying, just due to the relative economic mass they have. So, um, this is an ongoing thing that affects. It's 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 affecting a lot of things, but there's solutions that are uh, getting worked out. Some of it's the layer two stuff, and then really the the pulse the pulse chain is an excellent. Um, L1 solution where you still maintain the 
the simplicity of like the staking features that exist now um and you don't have to do all these like really overly complicated things just to like stake your coins because I, I i remember the when you guys were talking about even things like polygon uh the L2 solutions that are honestly total trash in terms of the usability are not going to take <laughs> off. It's all, it's the, the L2 Ethereum in the end, I, I believe the way that's going to work out is uh, Coinbase by default at a later point in time is likely to just offer withdrawals onto layer two so that um, any kind of that, that suckage that somebody has to do in their MetaMask wallet to like uh, send coins to like some other network or something like that. All that, all those complications are going to uh, essentially get baked into like the centralized exchanges so that when you withdraw, you're using wallets that are just native on L2 to take away a lot of that, a lot of that confusion for, um, to make it easy to use. But um, these kind of temporary solutions, like if it's overly complicated with, in terms of how uh, Matic or Polygon's doing it, granted, I don't, I don't know much about their, their, their project or their coin, so I'm not going to speculate on um, its long-term potential or anything like that. But any L2 solutions that just suck to use are not going to take off. Like, period. Um, I just have an idea as to what it'll, uh, <laughs> what, what it's going to look like later on. If you guys haven't done so already, go ahead and pull out your phones and check your staker app. It's a beautiful thing to to look at. Just saying. <laughs> it's just amazing hit that like button at right now. Yeah, uh, smash, smash the like buttons, all of them. Smash, all of them. subscribe, all of them. Follow everyone on the channel. Um, yeah, man, Smash. it is. Yeah. What a man! I love this rocket ship. This is a good rocket ship to be attached mm. to. I mean, it really pe is. People are starting to like come around on hex, man. They're like, That's, we were yeah, talking about that earlier. Yeah. <laughs> either either do it sooner or pay pay higher later. Those are your options. Oh. <laughs> like <laughs> I just saw my steak wrap for a second. Uh, 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 disgusting. Uh, sploosh. <laughs> <laughs> Go clean Woo! yourself off and come back. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> uh yeah, we were uh we were discussing that earlier. It's re regardless of whether you hate Hex, you like Hex, you hate Richard, you like Richard, it's it's it looks like it's coming under consensus that it's okay to start talking about hex. You're seeing people that didn't necessarily like hex start looking at the price chart and realize what's going on. Like we are getting recognized. It's starting to be okay. The narrative is changing. And with that comes price appreciation. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that as we speak during the stream, mm -hmm. as we speak. Yep. Well, if looking back at looking back at it all, I'm very thankful that I got the, I was able to get the prices that I that I got. So it, that's why it, it pays to uh, it, it pays to um, uh, you you, ge you generally mind. don't you generally yeah you want to have uh, an open mind and not just fall for some narratives. Like for example, uh, if you look at let's say the rest of the world, that like a lot of people still think things like cryptocurrency like Bitcoin or Ethereum is like a scam or something like that. And because, and because of their ignorance, because of their ignorance, there's an opportunity cost to that. They missed out on mad gains that Bitcoin and Ethereum did. So um, then, but you have layers to that. You also have ignorance within the cryptocurrency market, um, even from, uh, per, even from perceived like influencers or whatever like that. Um, you're you're going to have layers to this stuff and, and you have narratives like, uh, you know, kind of, uh, related to like the crypto market as a whole and then you have narratives within the within the cryptocurrency market but generally um the open minds and oftentimes like countering these these narratives is oftentimes extremely very lucrative um from and pays out massively um because you're essentially you're you're speculating and uh before everybody else is and you're you're experiencing those impulsive waves that um, take you to to some massive, massive, massive price potential. So, and you're going to be handsomely <laughs> rewarded in the meantime between price appreciation and then on top of that, sit back and just enjoy your yield off your yeah. stakes. Like you, would, it, it's a win win. Would you say it's like a wave three? I would say it's a wave three mixed with super compounding. It's it's quite nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bloosh. <laughs> that's, that's called a, a sploosh wave. <laughs> sploosh wave, if you will. <laughs> right. Hex is uh -huh. on its sploosh wave with its uh, future uh, pulse mentals coming in and pump of minerals. Man, everything's just coming together to be something truly great. Well, and, and like, <laughs> God for it. 
like Dalaka said, I mean, people really are coming around to Hex, and the more you've got, just kind of like they did with Bitcoin, right? Like 10 or 11 or 12 years later, now it's kind of gained more uh, acceptance from a global perspective and from a traditional perspective. But same thing with Hex, as it's had uh, 100% uptime, it actually paid out the interest. And as people understand how the T-share and mechanism and smart contract works, uh, people begin to see what it really is. And just imagine how how much more adoption it's going to gain. And as maybe the APY goes down, you might have the price go up. And just everything about Hex is just really bullish. And it's so awesome to be in uh, this early. Amen. Fucking amen. Uh, what's new with you, DC, since you've been MIA? Doing big things. Now you're uh, almost too famous for us. <clears throat> oh, your your mic is muted. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I said uh, I'm in the middle of a move right now. Mm. Oh, yeah. out of uh, out of California, I, perhaps. I cannot. I cannot say. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Maybe maybe off uh, off air we could talk about it. Yeah, we can talk about it a little bit. A little a little. Okay. Bit, a, little bit. a little bit. A little taste. A little, a little bit. Awesome, man. All right. That's cool, man. You just finished your course, right? So congrats on that. That's awesome to onboard some people. No, th yeah, for sure, man. I, I th honestly, if my goal kind of for the course a little bit, just you, so the way the way I try to get people into hex is just not by for you, like I I do think people are a little too forceful sometimes to get people into coins, right? It's just better that you find it organically, right? But it's it's it is kind of nice because usually every course about a quarter of the people end up getting into hex. Or at least have a position in it. Then that's and that's usually what I tell them. It's like, okay, if you if you think hex is pretty speculative, how much you just just do like a five percent allocation, and see what happens in a, in a couple months. And then they're like, wow, this thing did pretty good. And then they start slowly get. Then they get their bags and they learn about staking and they do all that jazz. Because it's usually it's a it's the best the best billboard for for a cryptocurrency is is the gains. That's all. Yeah. That it's proof, yeah. Proof is in the pudding. If you mm -hmm. <laughs> no matter how much you allocate, if you allocate a certain amount. And you get to see that price appreciation, and then Hex has has staking and yield to go with it. Like that, that's what that's ultimately what's going to sell people. That that's the name of the game, right? And Richard talks about it: price appreciation, price go up, up and yeah. to the right. That's all anyone cares about. That really, really, all of it boils down to up and to the right. That's from, from from my count from the last course, we got two hundred and twenty-four new hexagons. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Next one, it should. Uh, if everything keeps going out of the way it's going, it should be like 700, 800 for the next one. Which is <laughs> almost, which is almost the size of your entire course this go round. Which is right. Nuts. Yeah. Which, which is absolute nuts. No, definitely. And it, like we talk about hex, it, like, like the thing, the thing is, is like I did have to, I did in the course, I did have to say this about hex. Is just I told people at the time, don't do under fifty. No, I, I, I upped it sixty thousand hex stakes for a year. It's got to be at least that much hex in the stake. For the yeah. for, to make sense with the gas fees, but obviously this is before kind of the announcement of Pulse <laughs> Pulse well, he, he was <laughs> Pulse Chain. I was going for a different name, but whatever, you know, it's, I lost. I, but whatever. I, I, I like Pulse Chain. It's our nice inside joke, and you know, we were talking about earlier. Richard could be having an interview and straight face just mention Pulse Chain, and all true hexagons know what Pulse Chain is really about. But you know, he can he can have a mature, regular conversation. No one's the wiser. Man. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then some people have said that they think it might even be a fake out it, it, richard's throwing that out there to actually uh snatch up whatever domains he wants i don't think so i don't think he would uh waste his time with that i think he's probably already secured everything he wants for it but i know some people have suggested it might even be a fake out until mm. he obtains what he actually wants to uh get a hold of but i World i, I think i think it's i think it's pulse chain i think it's pulse chain if i had to put yeah. money on it I, I I told I told uh, Richard a, a dumbass name, but it, it was really funny. I thought Ther I thought the name Ethereum would be funny. <laughs> Wait, what was it? Ethereum, like Ethereum. There's like not a theory. A theory, yeah, the the theory? The Ethereum, yeah. Ethereum. It's it's a theory that's completely based all on facts. Mm. <laughs> I was like, just like I was just spitballing and throwing names at him, and he was just like, that one's like cool. It. No, he said <laughs> he said it was cool. I was like, that's oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I was like, but I thought the ticker symbol could be the. <laughs> I, 
I'm glad you're not in charge of our marketing. <laughs> no, no, well, hey, 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 hey. That was one I love name you, but I'm not. One name. I'm glad you're not in charge of our marketing. <laughs> Uh, I know it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Good talk. <laughs> oh, no, definitely, definitely. Well, that's the cool thing is, is like you kind of mentioned, I mean, even with Hex, the iteration of the logo is it does allow for community involvement. And, you know, the pulse thing is kind of like an inside joke, as we know. But <clears throat> it's awesome that Richard is willing to go on the telegram audio chat and, and go into the, the individual telegrams and like interact with you. I've never seen that kind of opportunity with Satoshi, Vitalik, you know, things like that. So. Yes. Well, if the ticker was just that, it's easy to remember. <laughs> right. I was going off the ticker symbol, not anything else. <laughs> Wait, how, how did you? I'm, we're going back to it. Look at the crypto's going to start his own chain. Watch out. <laughs> how do you? Wait, how do you spell? How do you spell it? Give me a second. I'll, I'll I'll throw it in the chat right now. I'm trying to see exactly how he spelled it. Ah, <sighs> good to have you back. <laughs> okay, ready? Copy. Here we go. You, you see, this is a silliness. This, this is why we win. This is why we're champions. Thinking outside the box here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's it <laughs> that's I call it oh that actually is pretty funny it's it's it looks better in text I think Thank it's you. fuck y'all <laughs> <laughs> I still don't, I still don't like it but I, yeah I knew what you were getting at yeah I mean you can and that's a real word that's actually a real word too yeah I was about to say throw it in the chat so, <laughs> so everyone else can see it you know, it's like a girl at the bar that you said no to, but you're like, you know what? Yeah. She's starting to look kind of nice. She's not. <laughs> five, five drinks later, she earned a point or two. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I might not take you home, but I might take you to the bathroom. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what I thought it was, too. I thought you said Ethereum, like Hex, Ethereum. Hex Kong. Speaking of which, uh, you know, Miley, are you going to be able to make it to the Vegas thing? Yeah, I, I, pl oh, nice. I plan on it because that way I can hopefully meet a bunch of our uh, Californians or maybe former Californians mm. if uh, DC is actually implementing this move come come soon. Yo, what's up, Greg? Uh, hopefully he's not too far away where he can still attend Vegas. No, no I can still attend Vegas. Okay, some, cool. Some say, some, I might say I'm, I'm pretty close to Vegas. I don't that, know. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, it might be you might have to just step out your front door at that rate. Uh, okay, I live at the Blasio. <laughs> <laughs> I own the Blasio. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's gonna yeah, it's gonna be a fun it's gonna be a fun time. Are you gonna be able to attend Look into Crypto? Have you looked at the dates and everything? Yeah, I, th <clears throat> I think I'll I should be able to. Uh, I should when be are able the to dates? Go to the event. When's June twenty fourth, I believe. Yeah, I think it's June twenty fourth. Yeah. Let me check the, the calendar. Yeah, he. If you go on uh, Maddie's Twitter, uh, he has a link posted to it. Hexican.Vegas, I believe. Could be wrong. It's always on a fucking Thursday. Without fu always. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Any day but Thursday. Always. I think it, I think it's just to give people like time to fly in. It's just like the early kind of thing. You guys can meet up if you want to. And then, you know, it trails into Saturday being the main day. Mm. I mean, I don't give a shit. I'll take I'll take days off. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure all of us are pretty much at the end of our ropes with uh, most of our jobs, anyways. So I'm yeah. more than willing to throw in uh, vacation time. Right. Some say I may have gone full time. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, man. You might you might say that's a theory of yours. Uh, mm. a theory. <laughs> a the Ethereum, <Yeah>. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So okay, so so okay, okay. So if Pulse changed the name of of the, of the of the hex the hex Ethereum chain, right? So let's just say I became I I, I make a I make a fork of that and call it Ethereum. <laughs> <laughs> Satoshi's vision, Heart's vision. <laughs> Do it, you won't. No balls. Uh, I mean that that is the beautiful uh, point that Dollar Cost mentions, whether it's you know legit or not. Is the the cool thing about crypto is. It does, like I said, it doesn't take many X's even from where I'm at now to be like, holy shit, dude, like that's some serious life changing money. And it's awesome that crypto is the highest appreciating asset class 
ever. And uh, Hex was the highest appreciating asset in general of 2020. And so what if it did the same thing again, you know, that, that'd be awesome. Oh my God, Maddie, the other Maddie, the DCL blogger, Maddie, uh, Wasabi just found out about thick Pokemon. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Uh, so how I, much? I, is, how much is a uh, thick Charizard going for right now? What's uh, 11, 11 ETH? Eleven ETH still. Eleven nope. ETH. Uh, my thick Pikachu, which is the cutest Pikachu, Adorable. is uh, do dude, they did it perfect. Right sides on the butt cheeks, the feet like this, little pretty face. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What? Classify the right size on the butt cheeks for a Pikachu. I'm curious how you came to that. Uh, <laughs> how you came to that conclusion? <laughs> It's it's <laughs> stop. It's, it's the best butt cheeks in the collection. You just you just you have to trust yeah. me on that. Oh man, I don't know. Oh. I guess Charizard's still the OG, it's still bringing the highest dollar dollar value. I, I think Pikachu might be worth more. I might flip it. I don't know. I, let, let me see if I can find it for you guys. <laughs> yes, please. please bring it, it, Pikachu. Oh, those cheeks! Jesus Lord. <laughs> Share, shh, go ahead and just share it. All right. God damn it. Might as well. Give me one second <clears throat> window. How much are you going for it? Like 75 ETH? <laughs> oh, here we go. God damn it. I don't even want to post this shit. <laughs> and I love the moves, too, that go with them. Fucking clap and thunder cheeks. <laughs> How much? How much? How much? Uh, uh, how much is the Charizard? Calm down. <laughs> Eleven, Eleven Ethereum. Eleven Ethereum. Price dropped on the Charizard. People, well, people were trying to sell it for twenty ETH, and people were like, "No." no. <laughs> I've, 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 I've been offered. I've been offered about like six sixty five hundred dollars for my Pikachu. Nice. Well, yeah, that's I'm, a I'm, pretty... not I'm not taking it though. Not yet. Yeah. Bro, just sell. God damn it. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I know, I know this market, bro. If I know it's like idiot, like I know idiot stuff. This is gonna, this is gonna go ham. Watch. Oh, someone did have a question about uh, mana and uh, Decentraland earlier. I meant to, I meant to post that up for you. Uh, look into crypto, but now I guess we got uh, DC in here as well to talk about that. Is there anything going on with Decentraland right now? And um. Oh. Go ahead and whistle. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> All right. This as far as good. stuff. As far as stuff going on, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but, uh, so well, your if, you're, if you're if you're um, honestly, I would not like. I understand like you you're probably looking at the price chart and it's you know it's pumped pumped a lot recently, but um, I do not like. I just don't see mana having sustained value over a long period of time. Um, I just don't. I just. I yep. do not. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah. Like the the whole the whole reason uh, Mana had that pump was uh, <clears throat> a grayscale Scale. is mm -hmm. grayscale. So there's not. And then <clears throat> I think also what happened was uh, this is speculation. What I'm going to say now. This is. I don't know if this is true or not. I have no idea. But it seems to make sense to me. Uh, I think that the developers of the Central Lands, um, they were effectively selling like NFTs for a while and. Um, I think what happened was like community members that were paying for those NFTs in mana, it just pulled a lot of supply out of the market. And then uh, due to that low supply, uh, it had a huge like run up in price, things like that. So, um, I just wouldn't really invest in it long term. Like even, even, uh, even if you look at the metaverse platforms, I just think, uh, I think a lot of that stuff is still pretty early. Um, I personally, uh, there's, there's one that I've looked at that's, in my opinion, much better than the central land, though I don't hold any <laughs> investments in it either. I just I'm waiting to see how the stuff plays out with the gaming stuff. Uh, but something like Sandbox, for example, has a way better product than the central lands. Like it just is like the like Sandbox has um, it actually ha it's actually like fun for people to like play something like that. Um, I don't own any sand tokens, so do not ask me on like prices I don't know. Uh, but when I'm looking at it from just like a neutral perspective, since I do not hold sand token and I do not hold mana, um, sand to me is clearly just a way better. Yeah. Um, it's just That's a way better project coin. It has a really good idea. It has some really cool ideas to it. Really, the bottlenecks for 
stand is they're limited by L1 because they're they're I I guess as we were mentioning previously with like gas fees on Ethereum, um, they need to basically have a solution on L2 uh, to create their marketplace mm -hmm. where anybody can create like assets or make cool stuff. So um, I yeah. I mean, most of this is limited by gas fees right now, right? Yeah, right. essentially the bottleneck for this. So yeah, or create, I, yeah, sorry, not, create uh, NFTs. That's what they they create like swords or whatever in game. It's it's going to like I know there's a lot of uh, shit talking when it comes to NFTs, and most most of it is retardation in 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 the market. It is like it really hey. is, but. Uh, <clears throat> Well, he, I, well, I'm not gonna. I you actually got a good price on that thick Pikachu. I'm not gonna go into go, go into that, but you did. <laughs> yeah, he got, did. A, he got a really good price on that. Uh, but the, nice but uh, yeah, like the the thing is with with all the gaming stuff, um, it's still really early on that. I don't know how it's gonna play out. Um, I'm just gonna wait to see how. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wait to see what what comes of it. Uh, it's not for me. It's it's not something I'm comfortable betting like large sums of money on because it's so um there's a lot that could happen there that displays certain things like for example like the way i see sandbox over the central land long term like i just don't really want to um speculate on that kind of stuff right now when there's just easier far far easier options like hex like that's has like the perfect it has really good macros i just i i just look at you guys like you there's if you pick let's say the best coins that are in like let's say the top 20 in this market the gains are going to be massive so i'm not going to pick like some coin that's in ranked like fucking like that has some really low market cap and speculate on it because um if you pick the wrong thing you just get completely destroyed right. and i'm just not interested <clears throat> in doing that like there's already there's already uh some pretty dominant coins um in the top 20 that to me are very obvious picks like long term and i'm not like i'm not going to bet against that because i know those are going to um, and, those are going to do really well and we've kind of talked about that right like you want to you want to have your bags pretty much set by the end of this quarter like you're you're running out of time and like you have the players in the space right now like most of you guys know who to invest in and like all these new projects and coins and everything coming on the mar market they're just here to try to get their to get their piece with offering you nothing just false promises and a bunch of expectations like you should have your solid winners already bagged up and ready to go uh for this bull run this is like the last <laughs> like this is the end of it get your mm -hmm. bags ready and buckle up oh where's charizard huh you won't buy it no balls put your money where your mouth is Buy, I'm buy that chart. Buy that Charizard. <laughs> All right. So let, let me share my Sorry. let me share my screen for see, a second. See if you see yeah. if you can tr see if you can trade, bro. See if the can you trade these uh, thick Pokemon. So right now I'm looking into buying a thick Raichu <sighs> to, to evolve my Pikachu. God, I hate you. <laughs> but right now I'm looking. So anyone who can get their hands on a Thunderstone, a thick Thunderstone, I'll uh, pay handsomely for it. How cool! How can a stone be thick? <laughs> oh, if only I, you know. Yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure they can figure it out. It's so fucking stupid. <laughs> no, actually, actually, okay, okay. I, all jokes aside, thick charger doesn't like. They didn't put like big cheat. <laughs> that ridiculous come out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, you can't even keep a damn straight face with that one. Uh, oh my god! This is why I love crypto. This shit is hilarious, dude. I, dude. So, so this is my investment thesis into into NFTs, right? If you do not invest into NFTs. Do not if you don't know what the fuck you're doing, and it better be play money if you're gonna invest into NFTs. Like I chose to invest three Ethereum total for all my debauchery into NFTs, okay? And what I did is like, okay, I, I look at art and I can't tell what's good in terms of what's like what's what's hot <laughs> or not. But I can tell memes. My meme my meme meter is fire, son. I don't miss with these memes. So I looked at thick peak at Pokemon and I was like, oh, this shit's gonna hit. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. Pokemon's popular, and you're making them thick. Win, the, win. There's the, there's another <laughs> NFT play called. Um, okay, they're called Crypto Pixel Pepe's. These things are fire. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna say nothing more. That's it. They're ground level right now. Just d d d spare change, homies. That's it. Don't fuck around with it. <laughs> yeah, spare change is an understatement. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm I'm in the rare percentage of people that have made money on NFTs, so I will say that too. Don't 
<laughs> yeah. Ninety nine percent of people with the best identities are trash at it. I is not part of the nine nine. <laughs> uh, guys, he's just keeping the thick Pikachu for his own collection. He's never selling that thing. Ever, dude. Like just like Ever. Hex Bros, never selling my hex, just restaking. Cold storage. Yeah, that, cool. that thick no, that, no, it's thick, that that thick pig, <laughs> Pikachu's gonna be staked for a long time, so don't worry, guys. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, God. Well, did you guys buy Ken Bozak's ball sack? What? That's not real. If it is, ugh. <laughs> God, I missed you, DC. You bring so much. <laughs> I know. So well, this is the entertainment factor. I mean, yeah. come on. All the quality. It is definitely the most entertaining industry I've ever been in. I mean, you know whether whether I, you know, agree or invest or whatever, like it is definitely like there's something new every day. And that, that is the cool thing about crypto as a whole is it is 24 seven. Right. And you got people all around the world. So, you know, when you mentioned meme culture and stuff like this, like you just get all different varieties of it and it's, it's uh, fun to see for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Uh, I know a couple of the female influencers were talking about taking all the dick pics they received and turning them into NFTs and selling them, <laughs> selling them back to the owners. Until uh, until their until their nudes get released on NFTs and then it becomes an issue. They just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah huh, huh, oh, then, oh it works the other way too. Hmm. It's just it's just yeah. gonna be the battle of the fucking nude NFTs, dick pics and uh, <laughs> and titties. Let's go. Hey, I could see something like that. Like yeah, with all the stuff you guys mentioned, that that you know could be a possibility. So you never know with crypto. You know, definitely it's it's. And look, let me tell you what, look, th th this, so I'm going to let you know, I'm going to let you in on a secret, okay? Most NFTs and the NFT industry and most of the stuff is basura. It's trash. It's trash, right? But just like earning interest on the blockchain was trash in 2017, it will actually be pretty good next cycle. There'll actually be some, a real market and actually a really way to actually make money on it. Next cycle, not it now. Mean, it doesn't mean what you buy now will have value next. Exactly, cycle. exactly. You're, you're you're kind of almost doing the greatest, the greater fool sort of thing with 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 NFTs and two. They're very illiquid. Next cycle, there'll probably there'll probably be a Uniswap in terms of pools for for actual NFTs. So you'll actually be it'll be pretty liquid or more liquid. Like maybe you you know, you you can buy and sell stuff in between. It's going to cost you ten cents, and you'll make you can make a dollar profit, pretty much. Hmm. If they start wait what? Sorry. They start doing ones with Pokemon prints. Oh wow. Well, maybe I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Well, congratulations, you destroyed our pump. Uh, good to have you back. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? It's at eighteen something right now. <laughs> Bro, we were almost at one point. We were almost at one point nine. You, you killed it. It's all right. It's all right. Boner pills are wearing off. That's all right. That's enough for. Bone enough for pills. tonight uh, guess who's guys. back <laughs> oh man um i mean i guess we're pretty much at the time limit anyways uh is there anything else you guys want to kind of touch on tonight dc i know you were kind of kind of late to the show so if you want to bring anything up touch on anything talk about your course all of the above let no, it's rip, just like, uh, yeah, uh, the course went pretty well. I'm glad to be back. I'm going to be streaming regularly now. I'm mm. probably going to be doing three to four streams a week on my own YouTube channel. Hell yeah. Nice, and man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be doing a bunch of stuff like that and just doing 24-hour stream. Just doing – I'm going to be doing – I'm going to be up to bullshit. This whole <laughs> – I'll be up to so much shenanigans. This is why I got so many things planned. I've got – I've got like clips. I'm gonna be a tick, dude. It's just, it's gonna be insane. You're gonna see me everywhere. I'm gonna be doing like a demon's demon level of work out here on these streets, memeing it up to the top. Okay. That was definitely the time to strike. You know, when the iron is hot, and that's awesome to see uh, that you'll be doing that. I mean, the biggest tip that I was given from like Hexo a long time ago was just like consistency. And uh, anyways, yeah, that that's awesome, man. I'm I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's awesome to see. Someone heard about Thick Pikachu and dumped a million X. <laughs> Squid, sir. Ouch. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I, I, so I, I will. I will full disclosure. I sold. I sold some hex the other day. Dun, I dun, sold. Dun. I sold one ETH of hex, so I could have 
ETH there for unstakes. That's what I did. So there you go. Hey, that's, uh, I... that's the only uh, Ethereum you have in your portfolio right now? No, no, I have other Ethereum. It just did, I was just like, well, actually, do it, do I? No, yeah, yeah, I do. I have some other Ethereum locked up in the cold storage. Yeah. 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 But, okay. like, I was just like, I needed some ETH, so I was like, I had some hex there, so I was like, all right, let's do that. Well, it's crazy to think, like, right now, Richard's mentioned that uh, fifteen to $25,000 a day is going to, to middlemen, and so imagine when that kind of economic energy per day can go into staking and stuff like that. Like, that's, that's a decent sum of money that could just go back into uh, more hacks, you know? So it's good for the User staking hacks and buying it, and it's good for the network. Thick yeah. chomp. <laughs> I was about to say, so you can buy more thick Pokemon, pretty much. Dude, th if you haven't seen a thick Slifer, is a real thing, but it just, it just. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I got my fill for. Uh, but there's a thick everything. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got my fill. Everyone can partake on their own. Uh, what yeah. about you looking to crypto? Anything, uh, uh -huh. anything new or anything you want to expound upon? Say, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's a, uh, you too. <laughs> um, well, I'm gonna, I'm not, oh, we're talking about thick, the thick, thick I, I gotta mute, so, all right, of, but, of, uh, of course not. <laughs> yeah, uh, as far as all I'm really looking for at this point is, um, I guess once that expansion, uh, once the, the expansion starts, uh, I will potentially be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at where, because the ideally, like when you're buying during uh let's say like an expansion waves you ideally want to buy like i mean this this good this kind of goes in general when you're buying coins like if you're buying when there's a red candle you're at a lower risk basically in theory it, you are because the price went down a little bit so um <clears throat> i'm i have some more money that's coming in and uh it'd be nice if there was just like a slight little like dip somewhere to load up on basically more coins uh because i be nice <laughs> yeah <clears throat> so that's like that's the that's really the because once you go into like the expansion wave you're gonna get like these sub waves basically and and um there's still potential like what's what's gonna happen like for example when you see donovan uh providing coverage with things like hex there's <laughs> there's an entire uh, well, I guess this doesn't necessarily apply to Donovan, but like for example, Trading View, there's essentially a, a large group of people in there that are basically they try to uh, trend trade. They never hold coins, which is really which is really dumb because like you you miss out on most of the gains. Uh, but basically, there um, you basically have like this constant changing of hands amongst traders that are all trying to like outcompete each other within these sub waves. So it's like. Oh hey, you know I made thirty dollars or something like that. It's just like the the <laughs> versus just versus just holding the coin. So um, you're gonna see you're gonna see definitely a lot a lot of that uh, happens every time. It's really every coin has that. It's just uh, more people are gonna start paying attention because uh, there was somebody in the Hex community that posted the the list of co list of coins on TradingView and, and Hex was listed on there. Um, I forget who exactly it was, but uh, yeah, it's not. It, I'm sure I'm going to start seeing at some point in the chat on Trading View. There's going to be people that just start to talk about it after um, it starts to go up higher and higher in price. Yeah, they they like to get in after it goes up 10x. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty seriously, no, much. they they they. Yeah. Uh, it's it's with the whenever there's like Coinbase listings or something like that, and you have this huge pop. Um, that's when that you start to see people in the in the chat start doing like trying these like momentum plays. But um, if you're doing that, you're not you're not gonna make you're not gonna make that much money. You're probably gonna lose it. Greed. What about you, Bram? What you got? Not much. I mean, I appreciate being able to uh, do the show every Tuesday night with you guys. Uh, it's something I look forward to. And then also every Sunday I do uh, my own stream on just uh, YouTube.com/slash Ballet Brand. Mainly, just kind of talk about hex and sometimes crypto in general with what's uh, what's with what's going on. But uh, yeah, you know, appreciate the opportunity and you guys uh, inviting us. And it's always uh, you know good to have the laughs and be able to uh, learn from everyone else and see what their sentiment is. Not on not just on hex, but just on uh, crypto in general. So uh, yeah, not much is new and just you know do the weekly show and yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, it was a, it was fun times. I'm glad to have DC back finally. He's free from the clutches oh, yeah. of his course. 
I know he's going to be uh, <laughs> hitting the ground running as he uh, continues to be the new influencer of the space. And I know he's going to do good things along with everyone else on the stream. So always a pleasure. Good talk. Hex is absolutely mooning. There's a lot of great stuff going on. Maybe thick Pikachu. I don't know. That's in the eye of the beholder to DC. Probably yes. Uh, you just you just see on the blockchain thick Pikachu sold, and then you just see that just all aping into hex, <laughs> 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 green <Yeah>. candle. <laughs> Damn, how much did that thick Pikachu sell for? How much hex just got bought? It's like ah, uh, okay, all right. Forty ETH, yeah. forty ETH just bought. Forty into ETH. Oh my god, I'll lose my mind if you sell that bitch for forty ETH. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that that I'll that's that, that that's the that's the fucking top signal right there. Jesus Christ, thick Pikachu goes for forty ETH. I'm calling it right now. That's your. <laughs> That's your fucking top signal. I don't yeah. care what I don't care what's going on. Thick Pikachu goes for forty ETH. I, there you yeah, go. Like, I'm gonna be sitting. I'm gonna be sitting like this. Take your profits. I, I sold yeah. it at forty ETH, and then there we go. Two months later, it's at one hundred and twenty ETH. I'm just gonna be like, God damn it, Bobby. <laughs> no, <laughs> way. no way. No <laughs> way. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, no way. Okay. On that note, guys. All right. <laughs> pleasure having you. See you next time. Next Tuesday, I believe uh, it'll actually be DC run the ship. So yes, tune sir. in. It'll be a good time. And uh, we'll go full DJ and oh. all aspects, I'm sure. And what? Sh sh mm -hmm. Shout out to Crypto Vince. He's going to be doing all the timestamps for these videos for us now, too. Awesome. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll have timestamps. So Shing. beautiful. Crypto Vince is the man. So let's go. All right, guys. That's it. We'll cool. catch, you, catch you on the next one. Peace out. Cool. Thanks, See you guys. Peace.